All right, so we are at part two of the mini part series of this freaky man, this freaky deaky man. Um, the title is called "The Suspicious Death of Diddy's Ex Kim Porter" and the controversial tell-all book about Diddy. I'm gonna be honest; I didn't know too too much about um Kim Porter, and now after hearing stories. I'm believing a lot of things that are being said, and I heard a couple of things in about this book and stuff like that, and how it corroborates the the accusations and stories. But you know that I like Stephanie, and I like the way she tells stories. And also, something that kind of like messed with my head uh, last when we watched the last part was that he got a statue that commemorates her. I don't know why it feels so weird to me. It feels so weird, especially if there's like rumblings of you're kind of you may be involved in it. That's odd. That's very odd. Like, I don't this is odd. Very, very odd. But I don't put nothing past nobody, especially not him. So without further ado, here's a freaky bada boom bada bang. This is going to be insane, so trigger warning, everybody, and uh, let's kind of push through this. Let's go. Bada bing, bada boo. I got water. For three days in September, there is this event where the wealthiest people, they just fly in from all over the world to throw $2 billion into the water mm -hmm. and just hope it floats. Cross your fingers. Oh, a yacht party. Welcome to the annual Monaco Yacht Show. But it's not just yachts being sold here. There's helicopters, personal submarines, luxury vehicles, whatever you're looking for, they have it. Mm. The average yacht price sold during the show is on average $30 million per- Nick, what? Boat, which even the 15 to $20 million, that's considered affordable. That's considered a budget boat. Affordable, my asshole. $30 million? That's cr- to get the super yachts, you're looking at nine figures plus, and they're all lined up at the dock for you to view. Some mm, of them have helicopters nice. that are parked on the helipad on the yacht. Uh. Others have these indoor pools because you're floating in the water, but you don't want to go into the water. You want to go into the water on your yacht. I'm not going to lie. There's something that kind of like trips me out of like a helicopter landing on a boat. It's like. It's like surfing turf, but not really. You know, it's like a, I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know, something about that kind of, I don't, I don't know. And they have these Greek statues just squirting water into the pool. They have libraries, onboard gardens what? for billionaires to relax. Some yachts even have their own wellness centers. Oh. There's a hyperbaric chamber. That's like a new trendy version of what's on a yacht these days. Huh? It's just when you need a lot more oxygen than what's in the air, you go into this one and get pure oxygen. There's medical suites. There's mini yachts that you can view. The mini yachts, they're not really for you to yacht around, okay? Those mini yachts follow your main yacht. And I bet you this yacht ain't got no damn Chipotle. $30 million for a yacht. I bet, you, I bet this yacht don't got no Uber. Ain't got somebody in a tiny yacht or in a little boat coming to give me my my food and leave it at leave it at my doorstep, do the handoff and everything. I give I give cuz a tip. Come in, come in Uber to this yacht. And they're basically <laughs> U-Hauls. They have storage compartments for jet skis. Or if you've got that uncle that just insists on coming, they go sleep on that little floating guest house. What? All the water toys are there too. Did you know jet skis? Top of the line, you're looking at at least $25,000 per jet ski. Huh? Or personal submarines. I didn't even know that you could get a personal submarine. The entry level ones start at just a million dollars. Nigga. That's not even the luxury ones. This is some GTA shit. What the hell? Where you're is she going with this? You're probably sitting on the floor of the sub. But what's a million dollars when you have a hundred million dollar boat? A million dollars? Every single detail on a super yacht is custom made. Drawer pulls for the nightstand, custom made. Coffee machines lined with quilted leather. Vendors are pouring champagne at the Monaco Boat Show, trying to convince you, yes, I mean, what else are you gonna do with $75 million instead of getting this vessel? Where do you summer? You need a yacht. Nigga, but no, even you in don't. a sea full of yachts, there are a few yachts that stand out as world-class boats. 
The Rob Report 2022 has awarded this one a particular award of best of the best in the motor yacht over 80 meters category. This nigga got a couch and shit on his yacht? Whose shit is this? Yo, y'all be having too much money, bro. What the fuck? What do y'all need to do? Like, oh my goodness. It's a yacht called the Victorious. Victorious. A luxury super yacht built in 2021. It's designed by Michael Leach Design. I, if you I guys know anything it. about boats, he is like one of the most highly regarded firms in the UK. <laughs> They're a leading player in luxury yacht design. If you care about every little stitch on your custom made furniture on the yacht, you call Michael Leach Design. They're meticulous. They might not even take your project. They only work on two to three yachts simultaneously. That's it. That looks kind of cool. The Victorious collaborated with Michael Leach Design and H2 Yacht Designs to make one of the best yachts in the world. It is a $117 million floating vessel that is nearly 300 feet long and sleeps 12 guests across six staterooms. But at most, if you're throwing a party, you can have 24 guests and 30 crew on board at once. But if you're like, wait, I don't really have a hundred and seventeen million dollars. Not for real. Like I'm trying, I'm trying my hardest to save, bro. It'd be hard. You know, I'd be catching these. I'd be, I'd be looking at these yachts on on uh, yacht eBay. You know, it, it, hey, the prices is a little bit too crazy, nigga. What? You can charter it for nine hundred fifty thousand dollars a week. Uh, a million dollar a week? A million dollars a week during the winter seasons. The summer seasons are actually cheaper at $800,000 a week. What the hell? Summer is cheaper. Because winter people want to go to the tropical climates on a yacht. Summer, you can go to Nantucket, the Hamptons. Oh, wow. 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 That is very fascinating. Mm. The vessel will cruise the Caribbeans and the Bahamas, and during the summers, it just glides through the Mediterranean. It is an entertainer's dream. On board, you've got a large beach club, that? a wellness center. It has wood-burning fireplaces. One yacht company said, when billionaires get on yachts of this magnitude, their jaws still drop at the luxury. Hey, question. To anybody, any of my normal people here, I don't know if there's any, if there's any rich people in the, in, the, in the chat or in the comments, we... I don't know about you, but I'll get bored here. Like, I'm I'm not going to lie. Like, all this luxury stuff is fine. But, like, I can't leave. I, I don't care how much money I have. I don't think I want to buy something where I can't leave. Like, if, if, the, if, if, a, if a storm comes, nigga, we're cooked. I can't leave. That's like a... A honey, a honey, a honey bun just gone forever. Like, no. <laughs> am, am I tripping? Like, would, would y'all get bored here? It's much nicer than a five, six star hotel. I mean, it's crazy. It's a boat. You walk on board. There's uniform staff waiting to hand you a warm towel, likely scented with a delicate eucalyptus blend. And when you're back from your jet ski adventure, there's staff members that provide yoga classes on the deck, sunscreen mm -hmm. required. And by sunset, you walk over to the dining area where you have fresh food laid out by the team. Oh. And then finally, you lay down on the velvety chairs in the cinema while your hair is still crunchy with salt water to decompress. Mm. That's what's supposed to happen when you charter the Victorious for a million dollars a week. Mm -hmm. Grace is a 25-year-old woman oh, on board shit. as crew for the yacht Victorious. Oh, no. They had just received news that the yacht was successfully chartered for the winter, and they're going to hit the water. This is not just a regular rich family. That's what Grace is told. They're debriefed, and they are told this is a very rich, very famous family. I mean, the crew, they're used to working with wealthy individuals and being discreet is very important. It's the but they've never worked with an A-list celebrity before. So before heading into the water, the crew, they're just really excited. They want to make sure oh, that Diddy gosh. and his family have a spectacular time. I mean, let's make the holidays amazing for them. That's the goal. It said that they were potentially even filming a Hulu family reality TV show, like Keeping Up with the Combs. But Grace noticed something very strange about the Combs' time on the yacht. She thought it was going to be like a cute family vacation. Nah. So why is it that all the girls are coming on board and there's a constant rotation of strangers and other A-list celebrities that are coming on and off board? And strangely, it appears that anytime a girl steps foot on this yacht, 
they get intoxicated after one tiny shot of alcohol. The fuck in that drink? I don't like this picture. Who is that? Actually, I don't want to know who that is. It's none of my business. It just doesn't seem normal. People on the yacht would take one shot and just be sprawled out on the deck, unconscious. What the fuck? Other what? women would drink one mixed drink and they'd be falling over themselves. They would go have a panic attack. Oh Some of them goodness. would just pass out. Oh. Grace didn't know exactly what's going on, but she has a sneaking suspicion that the drinks were laced with something. Mm. Drugs. Mm. And then it happens. What? December 28th, 2022. Oh, fuck. She alleges in her lawsuit that she was essayed by Sean Diddy Combs' oh, son, Oh, no. Christian King Combs. Nigga, not little Diddy. Oh, my fucking goodness. See, I did... This is what happens at Diddy's yacht parties. Bro, are you fucking serious? God dang, man. Come on, bruh. Like, what do we... Like, bro, come on, cuz. The sun, too? Really? Why can't y'all just... Damn, man. Why can't... I don't understand. Why do y'all gotta assault girls? What the fuck? Y'all ain't get... Y'all got... Like, I'd like to thank today's sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support Arizona Anti Trafficking Network. They work constantly to bring solutions to the illegal sex and human trafficking network in the states. Bro, this shit piss this shit pisses me the fuck off, bro. Like you You don't have to do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't even want to do that. Like, bro, you don't need pussy that bad to take it. You are a hoe. If you taking pussy, bro, you that's not cool, dog. Like, that's not good. Y'all and all and also y'all just think that y'all could just take it and nothing will happen. Like, what? Ugh, freaky ass niggas, bro. What the fuck. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team, and we would also like to thank you guys for your continued support. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMangoPodcast.com. Mm. Now, a big disclaimer to keep in mind with this case, it's currently ongoing and developing as we speak. There have been no court verdicts yet. So unfortunately, I must legally state that these are all current allegations and accusations. Mm -hmm. People are innocent until proven guilty, legally speaking. Mm. Some statements have been shortened for time, and all the theories and speculations mentioned are net as in opinions that can be found publicly available online. Bang. All reporting for this episode is taken from information that is online, so please do your own research research form your own opinions i'm not here to convince you of anyone's guilt nor innocence okay okay some okay. potentially triggering themes include heavy use of illicit substances including date r word drugs domestic violence mm. heavy descriptions of sa gang violence sex trafficking and this case is very heavy so please take a break unplug if you need and with that being said let's get into it all right in part one, we did a deep dive on the lawsuit that started all of this with Cassie, the hotel footage, and the Illuminati somehow gets involved. <laughs> in this part, part two, we're going to go in depth on the lawsuit against Christian Combs, oh, the son, fuck. what happens at Diddy Yacht Parties, and the very strange death of the mother of his children, Kim Porter. In part three, we will be going over the 13 people who have mysteriously died around Diddy, which is, there's a very alarming pattern of the way that he reacts and responds in interviews to some of these deaths. I'm not going to lie, having 13 people, like 13 people dead, and that's on your jacket, like, I don't really understand how someone can just live with that. Like. <sighs> it feels odd. And finally, in part four, we will be going through the so-called Diddy's list, the internet allegations, the celebrity friends who are rumored to have been complicit and mm -hmm. partaking in these crazy parties wild accusations that diddy is a clone in prison the baby oil is laced there's tunnels under his house as well as the 120 people that are working on suing him and some of them have since filed suit that fourth episode is about to be insane i will leave a pinned comment for those days that those videos will go up and with that being said let's get into it oh really out of nowhere a 22 dollar book hits amazon's hold on hold on hold on gang we're gonna check i'm trying to check to see when these are coming out Oh, goodness gracious. Pinned comment. I don't see where they are. So, that's fine. Okay, cool. Let's just keep it going. Let's go. 
its number one bestseller spot for fictional books. I mean, outselling Sally Rooney, Hillary Clinton, Nicholas Sparks, which is unheard of for a debut book. Mm. Not only that, it's a pricey book. It's 59 pages for $22. And it's self-published, ranking at the top of the bestsellers list. It's even more fascinating when you factor in the part where the entire book is littered with typos. What? So why the hell is everybody suddenly interested in this random book? What the fuck? It's titled Kim's Lost Words, A Journey for Justice from the Other Side. Mm. At first glance, the book appears to be a memoir. The way it's titled, that's the impression. Kim Porter is the late ex-girlfriend of famous musician Sean Diddy Combs. She's the mother of four of his seven children, and she passed away in 2018. Mm. After Cassie's lawsuit, after the feds raid Diddy's homes, after Diddy's son released a diss track on the world, this book is released September of 2024, just like right before his arrest. The book is described as being filled with, quote, alleged disturbing and graphic sexual encounters between Combs and other celebrities. Mm. The main allegations spewed in the books are, Diddy had asked Kim, um, how do I say, to use an intimate object for his bottom, and she refused, which resulted in allegedly beating her. That's what's in the book. There are other excerpts from the book that's- Nah, bro. Like, I understand, like, you want to get your rocks off and, like, do this pegging thing. But, like, if your, if your lady not with that, you're going to beat her? Because she won't shove shit in your ass. That, that is, that is, that's fucking disturbing. That's very disturbing. Like, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, bro, like, that would be something to ask your girl right like that would be something i don't know like that seems like something that would be kind of vulnerable if you haven't like broke that broke that uh that threshold and you wouldn't get the answer you wanted and you just beat her what the fuck state that kim witnessed diddy having intimate relationships with underage male stars in the industry Uh, another allegation that diddy allegedly hit kim with a chair i mean the opening line chapter one the introduction is already so salacious. Of course, it's going to get people talking. The opening page reads about Diddy. He was so charming, a wolf in sheep's clothing, a devil, and I fell for it. Oh, this shit. story must be told despite the fact that it will hurt my children. I cannot hide it any longer. Oh. Sean Combs must be stopped. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Well, so there were other celebrities' names being mentioned in there? So many. Whoa. Uh. Other salacious since gone viral excerpts from the book include, one day I found the vault where Sean kept all of his encounters with men. Yes, he kept a record of it, but that's Hmm. for later. The book shoots its way to the top of the charts on Amazon, which is crazy again, considering it's filled with these typos and some blatantly factually incorrect information. And it's just littered with names of like the biggest names in Hollywood. The timing of the book makes it go viral and it further sparks a huge debate of, Who's to say if this is her book? Who even published this? Be- I think I, I, I heard something and this is just off, this is just hearsay. I heard that it like somebody like got her words and turned it into a book. I heard. I don't mm. Because it's not Kim Porter. Kim Porter passed away in 2018. Mm-hmm. This book is released in 2024. Mm-hmm. The book says it's written by Jamal T Millwood for Kim Porter. Hmm. Jamal T Millwood is not the actual name of the person who published this book. What? That is the name associated with this huge conspiracy. Decades ago, one of the biggest rappers, Tupac, was murdered. Yeah. But there's a conspiracy that he's not actually dead. Some people believe that he's alive somewhere, living under a fake name, and one of those names is Jamal T. Millwood. But that... Uh, Can't be who published it, right? The real author's name is Chris Todd. He describes himself as a producer, author, investigative journalist. He states that he is the voice for the voiceless, which the I don't know, voice you take it for as you the will. Voiceless. He said that he basically solved John Benet Ramsey's case, which again, I don't know. Okay, but he publishes this book stating that he didn't make this all up, that this book happened to him. He said he never personally even knew Kim Porter. He claims that he received a flash drive that belonged to Kim after her death. He received it from two people that he knows are connected to the music industry. This is what he alleges for reasons 
unknown to us, he said, I believe that flash drive. He's like, I believe it to be true. Okay. He states on the flash drive, there are also, quote, tapes of Diddy with celebrities in sexual situations. I don't know if he has those specifically, but he does state he has photos and other evidence on the flash drive that he has not yet released. So he is just an author? He is a um, journalist, investor. I mean, or? people, everybody has a different word for him. Some people think he's an. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. If, if these videos come out and I accidentally see one, I'm, I'm, I might just, my brain might just shut off. Like there was, um, I remember one day I was scrolling on Twitter and I ended up seeing a video of Drake. Like I, like stuff like that really just be like, yo. Why why is this in my phone? I don't know these people. Why 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 do why do I have access to this? Why is this freely on the timeline? And then like I remember when bro, I remember bro, I'm not going to lie, bro. I I I don't like how I've seen so many <sighs> pictures of people. And I didn't even go looking for them. That's the thing. I didn't it it, it dead ass found me on my timeline. Like why are people sending this shit? To the thing. I... The fuck. An investigative journalist. Some people think that he's a conspiracy theorist. Some people think that he's a cash grabber. Mm. It really depends. And he claims that someone seeked him out. Yes. Even though he's not like a big time famous no. person. So, okay. Yeah, which is interesting because why would you not just send it to, I don't know, the Rolling Stone? Maybe because they probably sent it to somebody that some people believe and some people don't. Like, there's, like, that little thing of, like, he could be a hack, you know? He could be somebody who just, like, speaks so the, so the information can get out there, but it's not like people are going to take it too, too seriously, you know? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just you just slide that information out there that might go over people's heads. Well, it obviously didn't go over people's heads because it's number one selling book, so shit. Sure. Now, right. I guess some people are alleging that they wouldn't send it to big publications because it's alleged that Diddy has a lot of the big reporters connected to him. Mm. Now, he only received a portion of this drive with different writings that he said that he had to kind of piece together in a timeline that made sense to create what he believes to be a memoir. That's what he says. He does not give any more information on who those sources are, who gave him these flash drives, how he's so sure it's real, how he fact-checked it. He just says... They said they had her flash drive. I didn't ask too many questions about how they got it or where. That's scary. That is that is scary. A fucking flash drive just like pops up on me. One, I'm not putting that in my computer. One, I don't want to get a virus. And two, why did you give this to me? Like, why do I have this? Why do why why, why do you trust me with this flash? Like, why are you throwing this in my like? No where it came from if somebody put my feet to the fire and said life or death is that book real i have to say i don't know but it's real enough to me oh. sometimes you just have to put it out there maybe it's not a hundred percent of the book is true but maybe 80 percent is that is to get those people to come forward to either corroborate or deny the claims and that helps me as an investigator to know the truth hmm. he also says in the interview that he was asked to use the name jamal t millwood he states the t is for tupac Ultimately, he said it was kind of a battle. He slightly wanted to kind of use his name to get his name out there because he thought the book would blow up. But he was specifically asked by some unknown person that he never told us about to use the name Jamal T. Millwood. Ultimately, he states that the publishing of this book is almost like him being a whistleblower. Okay. Regardless of how netizens feel about the book, Kim Porter's family, friends, and ex-partner have all denied the book, stating it's all a cash grab. Oh, Amazon shit. eventually pulls the book, stating, we were made aware of disputes regarding the title and have notified the publisher. This book is not currently for sale in our store. But now that the book has gone viral, regardless of validity, it has people intrigued by Kim Porter's relationship with Diddy. She is often said to be the one that was the closest to him, mm -hmm. his best friend. Uh, I bet. I'm not asking anybody else if i was into some shit like that to shove something on my butt i'm like like if i don't trust you like i would imagine if if i was on that type of timing i would i would tell somebody who i completely trust with my life and the fact that he possibly said this to someone who's like who's not here anymore is Kind of crazy, actually. 
Netizens are wondering, was her relationship with Diddy anything like what Cassie has experienced? And how did she pass away? Mm. Danielle walks into the Vibes studio. It was like a scene out of a movie. Yeah, really Staffers nice smile. for this famous magazine are running around Look, screaming at this point. I mean, all you need really oh, are shit, papers Eve. to go flying in the air like one of those Wall Street movie scenes. Which- I always wanted to be in Vibe magazine. That I thought that was so cool. Like that in the source. Like I or XXL back in the day. Like I thought I thought that shit looked so cool. It sounds dramatic, but this whole thing is very dramatic. Back then, at these major publication houses, you would have to store all of your data on servers. These servers are not, there's no cloud. Mm. These servers are not little hard drives like they are today, USB, hee hee. They're massive. They're the sizes of nightstands, sometimes a dining table, and they're very heavy. Two of Vibe Studio's servers have been stolen. Who the hell would want to steal the magazine's servers? How do you, damn, not look, how do you, how do you steal a fucking fridge? It looks like fridges. It's heavy, it's bulky. Considering the level of security that they have in the middle of Manhattan, it's likely an inside job. I mean, it has to be. And the only person that they can all think of as they're sitting there figuring out what the hell to do is Sean Diddy Combs. Diddy did it. What is Vibe Studio? It's a magazine. Now, Vibe had wanted Diddy on the cover of their end of the year magazine. Danielle was supposed to be the main person on the project. And they look so evil, fuck. The idea was this. The good, the bad, the puffy, because he was known as puffy back then. Uh The idea was to hopefully somehow convince him to get into these angel wings for one photo. And then the other photo would have him looking slightly mischievous. It'd be a split cover. Possible cover line would be bad boy, bad boy, what you going to do? A play on the words because his company name is called Bad Boy Entertainment. They'd already done the photo shoot a few months before the issue was supposed to run. And Diddy was not enthusiastic about the angel wings, but they somehow convinced him. It took a lot of energy, but he put them on and they took the photos and everything is going as planned. What's they didn't get wings? the perfect mischievous shot, but th- there's a good cover in there. But the reporter, Danielle, she gets a call from Diddy asking him to see the vibe covers before they hit the stands. Okay. And according to Danielle, the conversation goes something like this. Diddy asks to see the cover photos. Danielle responds, I'm sorry, but that's against our policy. We never show anyone our covers. You will be dead in the trunk of a car. Hmm? Excuse me? What? Take it back. Danielle claims he starts laughing over the phone maniacally. Take what back? F*** you. What? Take it back right now or I'm going to call my lawyer and you're going to go to jail. I know where you are right now. You're right on Lexington, aren't you? She wasn't in the office at the time. She was in the car. What? the fuck like she knows which street that she's driving on right now yes what the hell how would he know where she is danielle hangs up she's scared but they don't make exceptions they're not going to show him the covers but when she turns around and goes back into her office everybody's telling her diddy's about to stop by we just got called that diddy's coming in and it's clear he wants to okay this cover before it goes to the press just a few years ago, he was found guilty of threatening a New York Post photographer with a gun. Oh, shit. Apparently, the photographer came up to take a picture of Diddy in his company car. A confrontation took place. Diddy whipped out a gun and threatened the photographer. He was found guilty. So, obviously, everybody at Vibe is freaking out. Now, thankfully, Vibe Studios had an external copy of the covers. Uh-huh. But Danielle still has this reason to feel scared. Yeah, the cover but- goes live. Everything goes live as planned. But the servers were still stolen. Nobody knows who. Danielle just has this weird feeling inside of her that Diddy is part of all of this. So he did a photo shoot for this magazine. He wants to see the photo shoot. And they say, no, we cannot do that. And he blew up. That's it. Yes. There's another instance that we're going to cover in the next episode where he was involved in a music video. He had this whole creative idea to be crucified in a music video. Last minute, he decides he doesn't want that part in the music video because he's like, maybe it's blasphemous. The executives included it in, released the music video to the world. And did he beat an executive with a champagne bottle? Was this like the hate me now thing with Nas? Because I know there was something like that. I don't I don't remember if Diddy was in that music video, but I know there was a music video where Nas was on a cross. And was arrested. Oh, shit. He has no control of his own emotions. Like, he doesn't no. want to do it anymore. He just throw a tantrum. Yes. Oh, he will hurt you if you don't listen. I mean, he said yeah, his name is Puffy because yeah. he got it. Okay. okay. 
beyond mm. him threatening a photographer with a gun. Danielle has had a personal experience with Diddy involving him and his girlfriend, Kim Porter. Uh -oh. According to Danielle, she had met with Kim Porter and two friends at this uh. little restaurant in New York City. I mean, it doesn't appear that they were close, close friends per se, but they kind of run in the same circles. They're sitting there drinking their cocktails. Mm -hmm. They see Diddy walk in, which I'm sure everyone, even if they're not trying to be, they're all a little bit jealous of Kim Porter. She's dating Diddy, one of the most influential people in the industry, even at that point. So the four of the girls, they're sitting at the table. Diddy walks in. Diddy knows all four of them, but he doesn't even acknowledge Kim's friends. He just motions for Kim to pass her bag, allegedly, according to Danielle. He takes her bag, a little baguette purse, turns it upside down, emptying the whole purse. Things start clanking, clanking Nigga, onto why? the table in the middle of this New York City restaurant. He's making a scene. He starts snatching up every single credit card that fell out while scathingly telling Kim, allegedly, you have no business being here here you need to be at home with those kids get home as fast as you can what the danielle said kim porter just grabbed all her stuff and her friends see her just get shuffled into a car that's waiting outside for her what the hell which is ironic because eight years later in 2006 diddy would be back on the cover of vibe and he would tell danielle the same journalist a woman deserves to be nurtured and taken care of kim taught me that she taught me how to love the fuck? Have you ever seen Diddy's naked back? No, I've, no, I've never seen Diddy's naked back. Apparently, I'm always seeing Diddy's titties and shit. Because he's always got his fucking shirt off, but I've never seen his back. The feds probably have, but huh? that's besides the point. His back has this giant tattoo that covers most of the surface area. It's a realistic image of a woman holding a child. What? So for those who are familiar, the woman is Azili Dentor from Haitian voodoo. Mm. She embodies fierce maternal love and protection. She's known mm. for feminine power. She's passionately protecting cool. women, children, and marginalized communities. There's a saying that's often associated with her. It goes, if Azili loves you, heaven help those who seek to hurt and destroy you. Mm. She's a protector, but she's maternal in the sense, if you come for those who she's protecting, she will turn the world upside down. She will rip her opponents to shreds. It's said that in cases of domestic violence, she is called upon to, quote, destroy the offender. She's often associated with natural disasters and forces of nature. That's how powerful she's believed to be. So she's like, so she's like um, a similar thing of Mother Gaia or something like this. I'm learning. I'm learning something new. And I'm also learning that this nigga has this maternal figure on his back and allegedly is beating the mother. Of OK, you know what? Just straight contradiction. Like, is there anything about that or like, bro, what? It's a very interesting choice yeah, it for is. a tattoo for Diddy. But many believe this is actually the start of his downfall. I got the Basquiat. Some believe that him getting that tattoo was the downfall because. Bro. Why does he have the Basquiat crown on him? I wanted to get that tattoo. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? She will seek vengeance. God dang it, man. Mm, and she's shit. seeing what he's doing. When did he get that? Like In like 2017, he revealed it to the world. It's unclear if he got it in 2017, though. Mm. Wow. Yes. And him and Cassie mm. broke up 2018. Yeah. Hmm. Diddy first meets Kim Porter at Uptown Records, which was one of the most prominent record labels oh, in Uptown the hip-hop and R&B scene. It's not part of universal music, but of back <laughs> then, Uptown Records is the place to be, and Diddy gets hired. He's working with the likes of Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, and honestly, from what I can tell by my little online research, it seems like everybody fucking hated Diddy <laughs> at Uptown Records. Allegedly, the other executives yeah, would Andre flick Hero. him off as he walked down the hallway to his desk, and they would call him Satan behind his back. Wait, what was his role? His role there? I'd be so sad. Niggas call me Satan. No, I'm not Satan. What the fuck? Well, well, I'm not Satan. Why are you calling me that? I'd be, I'd be so sad, bro. I'd probably cry in a car. Like, <laughs> why? Why? He was an executive. Mm. Oh, okay. So, so he was he an artist then, or? Okay, that's the thing that everybody gets confused with. He was Diddy never an was artist. never an artist. Yeah, I was about to say. Diddy was an executive. He started as an executive, started his own record label, and he only released his debut album after Notorious B.I.G. passed away, was murdered. And he also just put his fucking voice and shit on these songs, which we're gonna cover in part three. Mm. He's actually a suit, is what a lot of people called him. 
Mm. He's an executive. So he's always been behind the scenes from the first day. Yeah. Mm. So he starts as an executive and everybody hates him. Well, there's some people that like him. Like Kim Porter. Kim Porter worked as a receptionist at Uptown Records in New York City, where Mm. Diddy meets her for the first time and says it's love at first sight. Diddy remembers thinking, I wasn't trying to holler at her or anything, but I was admiring her. Her lips, her eyes, her mouth, her shape, her energy. I was just thinking, I wish I had a girl like that. She kind of made me feel nervous. You know, she wasn't like a New York girl. She was a bohemian mixed with Georgia peach hospitality. I got the idea that she liked doing stuff like walking barefoot in the grass. So that's the only bohemian part? I didn't think that I could get her to like me. You know, she was smooth. You know, like Walking ice. barefoot in She's the grass. She's cool, collected. She thinks before she speaks. You meet a lot of young ladies and they just don't do that. Kim was never pressed. She was always in control. He would later say, she was my muse. You know how they say it in the movies? I mean, it's corny, but beautiful. She, she completes me. Which can be verified with some accounts from people at Uptown Records. They said, Puff is a super achiever. Kim is all about peace, love, and life, you know? Puff finds calm in her presence. Puff was in love with her from the first time he saw her. You could tell from the way that he looked at her. Which is unfortunate because Kim Porter is dating an artist signed with Uptown Records. I'll be sure. In oh, fact, they have a child, me. a son together named Quincy. I mean, it took a few years of Diddy pursuing Kim Porter for them to finally give it a shot. And they said once they start dating, they're just inseparable. They said we went out together, we ate together, we played together. He would want me at the office. I would want him at my shoots because she's also a model. Our bond was so tight. Mm. Diddy said life is not good without Kim Porter around. Mm. I wonder if she's going to talk about I'll be sure and that now side note of course everybody Mm. accuses kim porter at the time of being a gold digger but everyone who knew her says even if you ask about her favorite memories with diddy not a single one is materialistic she says i'm not impressed by things not a bag or shoes or a car i've got a lot of stuff you know impress me with your person show me that you can be a really good man that's how you impress me that's cute by the time they start dating they've got this beautiful blended family Kim Porter has Quincy from her previous relationship with Albie Shore. Quincy. Diddy has a one-year-old son, Justin Combs, that he had with his previous partner, Misa Hilton, oh. who was also allegedly Kim's friend. And they actually become one of the most iconic celebrity couples during that time. According to one source, some tried calling them Black Barbie and Ken. They have their little fairy tale moment where Kim gets pregnant. She's about to give birth with Christian Combs, her second son, both of their second sons. And it's supposed to be this happily ever after. Until one day, allegedly, Kim is happily pregnant, happily in this beautiful relationship. She reads on the tabloids that the father of her child, the one that she's pregnant with, is dating Jennifer Lopez. Oh, Oh, shit. Now, that's crazy. Nyla, you just you just fucking up the whole setup. Hold on. Don't choke yourself. Give me a second. Give me a second, girl. You can't just lay down one spot, huh? You got to got to maneuver. Huh? I also saw a video of, um, there was like, not a video, I saw a thumbnail saying that J-Lo knows everything. Ugh, the algorithm is algorithming. J-Lo. And she's what? like, I didn't know that we're broken up, basically, is what a lot of sources allege. That's that crazy. She didn't know until she read the tabloids. According to an older Essence magazine publication, when Kim was pregnant with the couple's yeah, first child, Christian, did he, quote, stepped out on the relationship and in an astonishing display of celebrity infidelity, took up with Jennifer Lopez. Suddenly there was Kim Porter's man, the father of her newborn son, parading his movie star girlfriend in front of the paparazzi's flashing cameras to all the world. It looked like he was thinking, Kim? What Kim? That's just rude. <laughs> wow. That's rude. Kim said the worst part of it all was that everyone... Anytime she was around people, they would just keep asking her, oh, Kim, are you all right? She said, quote, I just hated that. They Mm -hmm. were talking to me like I was just really crushed. I have kids. I'm a grown woman. According to some sources, Kim refused to acknowledge the fact that Diddy was dating J-Lo. She left. She broke up with him. She's no longer dating him, but she didn't confront him. She didn't. She never mentioned Mm J-Lo. She just broke it off. And sources say that drove him absolutely batshit crazy. That's gangster. That's gangster. She didn't let it it show. No. Her former attorney would later state, she knew he was sleeping with other women, but she was very jealous of J-Lo. How could you not be? But Kim was like a Disney princess, really. One of the most beautiful women I'd ever met. But the relationship Mm. wasn't real. That's what Kim and Diddy say. What? Yeah, that's what they both state after the fact. Kim says that relationship 
with Jennifer Lopez wasn't real. Oh. The world just saw the bright lights and camera, but I knew what was really going on. He was still in love with me. In a previous interview, Kim stated, he still called 50, 60 times a day. It was like my life was not my own. He was very, very intrusive. And they were public. They went to the 2000 Grammy Awards together where J-Lo wore that insane green Versace dress that everybody, ah, yes. The one that started a Google image search. Yes, okay. Oh. I don't even know the story behind that. Yeah, apparently this is so many people were looking up that photo that Google created the image search tab. Oh, wow. Because oh, wow. of that photo. <gasps> That's fire. Yeah, they were an iconic couple. That so from the nigga, outside, they that is fire. Shit, if I was if I was the reason behind Google Images, I would act bad in any movie that I'd be in, except for one. Selena, I would be. I would not. I wouldn't care. But yo, it seemed like they're both in love. But again, according to Kim and Diddy, they were not. Oh. Diddy corroborates all of this by stating the whole time he was with J Lo, he could not stop thinking about Kim Porter, and he also kind of blames the cheating on Kim by stating, you know, I, I'm used to applause when I walk into the room and Kim was just too cool. I would tell her, I guess I'll just go be with someone who will take care of me the way I want to be taken care of, who will be a little more aggressive. That did not do the trick. And quote, Kim wasn't really conforming to how I wanted her to conform. So you dating know, J-Lo was grown. his statement to Kim. He later states. So you tell me he, this nigga. So apparently it was love at first sight. She was your muse. But she ain't fold to you. She was like standing on her square. You ain't like that. So you went to J Lo. Uh, okay. I guess. Jennifer was my perfect match in terms of energy. I thought I'll test the waters and hopefully Kim will see I'm serious and come running after me. Except she didn't. Mm -hmm. According to Diddy, all he could think about during this entire time was Kim. He said, with Jennifer, I was attracted to someone who had the same energy as me, but that isn't necessarily the best. Because I'm so aggressive, the best energy for me is someone who slows me down, makes me feel like I can breathe. You mean what you it's said? It's hard for me to breathe. But when I'm around Kim, I feel like I can do that. Apparently, the Grammys event, where I was telling you that Jayla wore that insane Versace dress, mm -hmm. okay. Kim was watching the Grammys with her friend and she casually just said, I guarantee Diddy will call me before the credits roll. Ah. Sure enough, he calls her at the Grammys that he's with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> and I'm sure, but this is probably the worst 14 hours of Jennifer Lopez's life when she gets arrested with Diddy in connection to a shooting. As they're dating, both of them get arrested in New York mm -hmm. City for a yeah, shooting that happens at a club. Yep. Mm -hmm. Diddy had been at this club with Jay. That's that shine shit, ain't it? Hello, mm. Shine, which mm. is like a musical artist that he had just signed, Fuck. I believe, and his bodyguard, Anthony Wolf Jones. Fuck. The four of them are at a club when an argument breaks out and somehow that escalates to shots being fired. Ultimately, three people get shot. There are witnesses from the club that are certain that they saw Diddy holding a gun in his hand. Diddy's protege, Shine, was also holding a gun. And according to a witness, that's what the witness remembers, but they fell to the ground because they had been <sighs> shot in the shoulder. Another bystander, she had nothing to do with the initial fight. She doesn't even know these people. Her name is Natanya Rubin. She was shot in the face by Diddy, she claims. Mm. It said that in the ER, before she passed out, she said, I was shot by Puffy. Thankfully, she survived. And Wait, her who got in fight with who? There was just like a bar brawl. It was like a fight and they just started shooting. Diddy got into an argument with like bar goers? I it believe probably a nigga his... Moment musical protege and some people got into slight oh. arguments and then all these guns got whipped out in Manhattan and shots were fired. Thankfully, Natanya survived and her story has been consistent for the past 20 something years. Yeah. She's always said, I watched him. I watched Puffy. I saw him with my own eyes shoot and it went through my nose. <laughs> like the bullet oh. went to her nose. How is she doing right now? Not well. She's doing interviews because now in 2024, people finally believe her. Man. What? Now, Shine, the 18-year-old musician, gets arrested at the club. Diddy and J-Lo had already left by the time that cops he come. He took the fall. They ran straight to the car. Side note, some allege that Diddy zipped out of there, leaving his girlfriend behind. But either way, they both end up in the car being chased by NYPD. I think they run like 11 traffic lights before they're finally pulled over. And inside the car, some sources allege inside J-Lo's purse the gun. was the gun because Diddy would make her. Anyway, yeah. long story short, there's a lot of allegations that Diddy was the shooter. They all get arrested. J-Lo's charges are dropped. Now it's just Diddy 
his bodyguard and mm. his musical protege shine now diddy is represented by a famous attorney johnny l cochran jr this guy's resume is absolutely unhinged oh my his attorney gosh. has since passed but he used to rep oj simpson uh -huh. michael jackson uh -huh. against the child molestation accusations he rep tupac and now he's repping diddy it this nigga johnny cochran was like bro Bro, I wasn't born, but I'd be hearing stories. He was saving niggas. Like, what the hell? In this trial. Not this one in 2024, but the one in the shooting. Mm -hmm. Now, their defense was stating that, yes, he was there. Yes, he pulled out the gun. Yes, he fired the gun. Okay, but he shot it to the ceiling as a warning sound for everyone to get down, get quiet, calm down. Every shot after that, that actually injured people... <laughs> that's gotta be shine that's gotta be 18 year old musical artist right there yes of course and the all... only reason that they're all saying all these witness testimonies are coming out saying that it was diddy is because diddy's the one with the money so they're gonna file civil lawsuits because they want the money ultimately diddy gets acquitted so does the bodyguard Fuck. but shine gets 10 years in prison for assault wow. gun possession and reckless endangerment somebody has to be held responsible and it can't mm. be diddy which side note he was always pictured walking around in silk suits during his trial. Other times he'd be wearing clothes from his own clothing line, Sean John. There would be people outside the courthouse with signs that read, hip hop needs you, keep puffy here. After the verdict Free is puffy, read, Mon. Diddy would tell the reporters, I give all my glory to God. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be able to walk out of here. I wanna thank my mother for being by my side every day. And a lot of people have stated, that sounds like, a, like an award speech. Mm. All the people, all my fans, my staff, all the people in New York, everybody that prayed for me all over the world, thank you. I just feel so grateful today. I feel blessed. Shine would eventually be deported back to Belize Fuck. in 2009. He would say in a podcast, Diddy's lawyers were here to secure a not guilty verdict by any means. He is a $100 million corporation, and they looked at me like I was the enemy. Mm. Wow. After the shooting, Diddy and J-Lo stay together a bit longer, but it's really only a matter of time. It's alleged by insiders that once Diddy left J-Lo in the club like that after the shooting, she was over him. She was like, I am so done. Yeah, but why? nigga, you not, can't leave your girl in a fucking club in a... Like, bro, what? Dating. Another incident takes place in 2000. There's this massive wedding in Italy for L.A. Reid, the former CEO of Epic Records. Now, given L.A. Reid's status in the industry, everybody's going to be there, including Shakir Stewart. I hope I look. I hope I look good when I'm older. Like, I wonder how this beer going to look if it's a, if it's, if it's got that salt and pepper going on. I don't know. I need to put. I need to keep the cocoa butter going. TikTok be making me look ugly as shit with the old filter. We I don't we haven't well we haven't really gotten too too crazy in the story so I'm just bantering right now but hmm, I don't know. He's a music executive. Most oh, notably, he worked at Def Jam Records. He's actually a very big player in the world. He was responsible for signing artists like Beyonce, Ciara, and Rick Ross. Oh, wow. He's at this wedding in Italy, mm. and if his mother's allegations are correct, he may have potentially been dating Kim Porter. Since Diddy is in a very public relationship with J-Lo, why wouldn't Kim Porter move on too? I mean, it's said that Diddy, who is also a guest at the wedding, finds Shakir's hotel room, bursts in through the door. Finds who's? Shakir Stewart's hotel room. I'm going to just say this. I My heart goes out to any man that's like talking to... Not, let, let's not just say man. My heart goes out to any person that's talking to somebody whose ex is on some wild-ass timing like this because you... If you're like unsuspecting, you don't deserve the wrath that's coming from someone who can't control themselves. Like, my heart goes out to you because, bro, I ain't even do nothing wrong because, like, yo, fuck. From Kim's alleged boyfriend at the time. Uh -huh. And in a fit of rage that Kim Porter had moved on, you know, just like he allegedly had with J-Lo, mm -hmm. he grabs a chair and slams it over Shakir Stewart's head. Shakir's mom said about the whole incident, Diddy left him bleeding on the hotel floor in Italy. He had to have stitches and then Diddy threatened him. I'm going to kill you. That's when I said, you need to get out of this business. This man is crazy. Mm. Diddy has always denied that this has ever happened, but a few people that have attended the wedding corroborated the story to Rolling Stone. It's, cra Diddy. it's crazy. It's cr oh, not this nigga. His former bodyguard, Gene Deal, says Kim couldn't have nobody. He, Gene Deal, bro, he, he is spilling beans about Diddy. Like, it's crazy. But, like, 
like yo, like this is this is crazy. Like this this is so so crazy. Like imagine you're out here running around like the Joker and you just deny it and people are like saying like yes, you did that. And like the the <laughs> after they, they, they nothing happens to you. You just you just like you just be seen as some type of like super villain on some demon time and and nothing happens to you. You 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 probably will feel like you're untouchable, bro. Kim could have nobody. Diddy Puff could do whatever he wanted to do. Brother Love could be whoever he wanted to be. That's crazy. If Kim ever tried to get with somebody, Puff would interfere with them That's or hurt up. for trying to be with them. He wouldn't let that happen unless he was bringing them into the picture. That's so fucked up. Kim couldn't go nowhere. Kim couldn't be in a relationship. She couldn't be at the clubs. If he called Kim's house, she had to be there. Again, these are just allegations, but another allegation is that he had Kim Porter's whole house bugged and wired, and that's how he knew that she was seeing Shakir Stewart. Oh, what the and fuck? And he would hire PIs to follow her around. But again, the whole thing is just beyond bizarre and infuriating <sighs> because he can do whatever he wants, treat Kim allegedly like shit, hmm. but nothing happens to him. Nothing happens to Kim. Now, side note, I don't know, again, if this is true. This is just another allegation. But one insider states that Kim had told her about how they broke up and, quote, did he put her up in this apartment building on the Upper West Side? It was an old building, and she said her apartment was infested with rats. She said she came home one day, tried to put on her boots, and there was rat feces on them. Ew. And she was just like, I gotta get out of this place. Which a former attorney for Kim backs it up by stating, he didn't want to pay her rent, get a nice apartment for her, nothing. That's crazy. So truly, he just treats her like shit every time they break up, is the allegation. So and probably while her? they're dating, who knows? Now, the anonymous source continues in the allegations. I mean, I remember just her being the sweetest kind warm and caring person diddy was a controlling narcissist and i could see why he would be attracted to someone like kim bro this nigga is fucking insane like like bro you say you love this woman but you got her in a in a rat infested apartment like are you punishing her like this has to be punishment no 2000 at la reed's wedding in italy the summer of 2001 something else will allegedly take place but oh, we no. the public won't know about it until this year what you mean then 25 year old talia graves hmm? says that she was panicked what she woke up found herself tied up huh Who's talia gray she's just a woman who woke up tied up on a couch what in diddy's studio what and all she remembers is she had just met with Diddy and one of Diddy's bodyguards, Joe Sherman. And the only reason she was even meeting with them is because she was dating one of Diddy's employees, an executive at Bad Boy Entertainment. Uh -huh. Diddy called her specifically to come and talk to him about her boyfriend's performance issues. She thought it was weird, I'm sure, but maybe he's trying to sit her down and be like, are you distracting your boyfriend from work? Why is he so distracted? She just wants to help her boyfriend. So she goes to meet with Diddy, they urge her to drink a glass of wine. She drinks it and that's it. She knocks out and now she's waking up and her arms are tied behind her back. Bro, allegedly, according to the lawsuit. The now, Diddy and Joe Sherman, the bodyguard, this is what she says. Her lawsuit alleges that they essay her from that point forward. She states that she was crying for help the whole time and nobody came. According to the devastatingly the explicit fuck? lawsuit, quote, plaintiff, so plaintiff is going to be Talia and Mr. Combs is Diddy, so I'm just going to replace it to make it easier. Talia screamed out in pain, but Diddy continued to violently, anally rape her. Oh my god! He gosh. physically overpowered her, smashing her head down on the pool table. During the brutal attack, Talia vomited into her mouth and on the table. At one point, she involuntarily defecated. Diddy was undeterred. He wiped himself off and applied more lubricant and without any acknowledgement of Talia's distress. This nigga is an animal cut. What in the fuck? Bro, ew, yo, ugh. Like, you... There's just nothing stopping you, huh? That's fucking disgusting proceeded to essay her that's fucking disgusting the lawsuit states she experienced intense pain and burning sensations before losing consciousness again the next thing she knew she woke up on the couch to allegedly joe sherman slapping her across the face forcing his private parts into her mouth she states her face and wrists were because you it's like there's levels to being fucking disgusting and you just exceed it like one Obviously, you are a nasty piece of shit to rape somebody. And you just keep going 
after she throws up and shits herself and you just what like that's that what the f- yo i yo Yo, get this nigga, bro. Somebody get this nigga, bro. Like, oh my gosh. Bruised, she was in severe pain what and distress. The fuck? And when he was done, she quickly grabbed her clothes in fear that Diddy would come back and just ran out of there. Yo, what the? She was terrified at the time oh. to report Diddy because it's Diddy, but also she claimed she was in a very nasty custody battle over her child. And she was scared that this would make her lose her chances. She what told the her boyfriend, fuck? the executive, but allegedly he tells her not to do anything because you're going to ruin my career. So for the next few decades, everybody in the story that has a dick is insane. Like, yo, yo. How could you say this to your girlfriend, bruh? How could you even muster up the courage to say, nah, I hear you. Don't say nothing because you're going to ruin my career. Nigga, fuck your career. Nigga, fuck that career. She states that she bore the consequences, having panic attacks, self-exit thoughts, depression, and she thought she was moving on until November of 2023. She learns for the first time that over 20 years ago, what happened to her had been filmed. And that video of her being essayed was being shown to multiple men at Bad Boy Entertainment and was used to publicly degrade and humiliate her. It's It felt like all this trauma that they allegedly inflicted on her was solely for Diddy to allegedly feel like he humiliated his own executive, like some sort of power move. Like, see what I can do to your girlfriend? Why do you need to- How did she find out about that part? The lawsuit claims her ex-boyfriend told her. Just like mentioned it in passing, I Mm -hmm. guess. The other executives at Bad Boy had seen it, and they all basically allegedly slut-shamed Talia, the victim, and told the alleged boyfriend of hers to break up with her because of the video, because she was a victim. What? But this doesn't come out until 2024. The alleged essay takes place in 2001. And now, in 2003, where we are in the story, Kim Porter and Diddy officially get back together. Two years after Talia's assault, they get back together. Alleged assault, legally speaking. They're seen at a lot of high-profile events together. They're spotted strolling on the beach together. I mean, it seems like this time around, Diddy is trying really hard. They're constantly seen spending quality time attending these high-profile music awards. That same year, though, another incident occurs that we won't know about until this year. Cipriani's is one of the more famous restaurants in New York City. Mm -hmm. And Crystal McKinney, a model signed with IMG Models, is invited there to meet with this huge fashion designer, Sean Diddy Combs, of the Sean John clothing line. He had just launched his Sean John clothing line, and they're doing like $450 million in retail sales. What? Yeah. This is going to be the next huge step in Crystal's career. There's no connection like Diddy in the industry. She had to fly all the way from Miami to New York City, but that's fine. But there's more rules. The designer for Sean John tells her that she needs to go to the hair salon, make sure to touch up her roots so that she remains fully platinum blonde. She needs to get her extensions and the clothing to meet Diddy in must be a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon beige v-neck shirt, a fur lined handbag and jewel encrusted jeans. It felt a little specific That's in odd. particular, but it's fine. It's she shows up to Cipriani's. She's seated directly across from Diddy, and almost instantly, he's hitting on her. Quote, coming on in a sexually suggestive manner. He keeps telling her that she's beautiful. Her eyes are gorgeous. You're going to make it one day as a model. You're going to be big one day, especially because I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you the connections. And he's just nonstop whispering these things to her, refilling her wine glass nonstop. He gives her his number and tells her, Call me later tonight. That night, he instructs her to meet him at his New York City studio, at which point there's a bunch of people drinking there. Oh, my god! Just gosh. smoking a joint, drinking. She smokes weed, so Crystal accepted. Oh. But that was not weed. Supposedly, she believes it's weed laced with a narcotic and some maybe some other intoxicating substances because one hit, that's it. She's like, that is crazy. That's why you don't smoke nobody else's shit that you don't know. Don't take that blunt. Niggas is lacing shit. Don't take that blunt. If you don't, if that's not your gas, don't take that blunt, bro. 
you better be safe and sorry. Everybody on, that's watching this, don't take that blunt, bro. Fuck that. Because she's a weed smoker, so this is not... This is not weed. Mm. One hit and she's feeling not well. And he tells her, you're being way too uptight. Keep drinking. Keep drinking. She said she feels like she's floating in the air. Eventually, she's unable to control her body. She tries to go to use the restroom, but allegedly Diddy follows her in and essays her. Dog. He forces her head down and commands her to, quote, suck it. She refused, but he allegedly forced her anyway. What the fuck, And she states dude? that he just left once he was done getting what he wanted. She gets up, ends up losing consciousness. The next thing she remembers is just in a cab heading out of the studio. Years later, Crystal would end up hospitalized after a self-exit attempt. Oh and it's my hard, gosh. she states, in the lawsuit because everywhere she would go, she would be reminded of her alleged essayer. He's everywhere on TV, music, film, That's everywhere being celebrated, up. everywhere, and she can't escape. I'm so she sorry, said, bro. I had my whole future mapped out that was stolen from me. Being essayed and having no recourse is so painful. I felt like I was dying every day. You know, I, I did not have the strength to come forward yet. Mm. I hope that by speaking out, I can help other victims come forward and seek justice. Oh, my gosh. The public would find out about Crystal's allegations decades later. But she's not the only one suffering. The same year in 2003, while Diddy is flaunting Kim Porter on his arm, getting praised for raising $2 million for the New York City education system, winning BET awards, MTV awards, getting nominated for Grammys, Jane Doe is 17 years old in 2003. Oh my gosh. That means she's in the 11th grade. And she was, according to the allegations brought forth in her lawsuit, just offered a ride on a private jet. Like, I don't know many people that would turn that down, especially when the private jet is being chartered by P. Diddy. In the lawsuit, Jane Doe alleges that she met with Harvey Pierre. This is the eventual president of Diddy's company, Bad Boy Entertainment. He was one of the top executives from him. the get-go. Jane Doe meets with Harvey in this lounge in Detroit, and she doesn't know who he is, but he keeps telling her, do you know my best friend is Diddy? So... This guy, the president, right? He works for Diddy. The president. Correct? Yes. Okay. So Diddy is more in charge than the president. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. So to the point where he calls Diddy. This nigga is like really just, just doing this back to back to back and just has the, like, you. <sighs> These niggas really let this dude do this for this many years. How in the fuck, like, nobody says, hey, bruh, you need help. You need help. And it's like, hey, this girl at the bar doesn't really, like, believe me, I guess. So here you go. She, she hears Diddy on the phone, and over the phone, Diddy allegedly convinces her to get on a private jet to come see him in New York. He convinces her, and I'm, I'm sure she's excited. And as they're heading, getting ready to leave, mm -hmm. she alleges Harvey Pierre asked her to come into the bathroom with him, where she alleges like that he ankle. was smoking crack cocaine from a Pepsi can, and once he was done, he took off his pants and ordered her to, quote, suck it, and forcibly shoved her head down. Why are all these niggas so nasty? Like, dog, what the fuck? Like honestly, like like honestly, honest, honest fucking Lee. What what is wrong with people, bro? What is wrong with these niggas? Like you're like that has to be the most terrifying vision or something to see. This niggas is smoking crack out of a fucking Pepsi can, and he just drops his pants and commanding you. Like what the fuck? Side note, the law firm representing her is Cause. the same law firm that represented Cassie Ventura. So I'm just saying it is up to a lot of law firms to do their due diligence to make sure that the clients have strong cases. Oh. So do that with what you will, right? Now, following that, she alleges in the lawsuit that they drove to the airport, boards this private jet, flies into New York City where there's two black SUVs waiting for them. They go to Daddy's House Recording Studio, which is owned by Bad Boy, Daddy's House where she alleges that he was pushing her to drink and smoke. So it's four of them in there. Diddy, this is a child. Mr. Pierre, Harvey Pierre, and a third unknown person. She doesn't even know the name of this person. This is a child. And they keep telling her how hot and sexy she is. Eventually, no. Diddy leads her, allegedly, into the bathroom in the studio and allegedly assaults her over the sink. She states she did not consent, and according to the lawsuit, he told her that he could not orgasm and asked her to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to get him off. 
By this point, she says she's coming in and out of consciousness, and her next memory was waking up to see the third assailant starting to essay her in the restroom. Cause. She kept telling him to stop, but he did not. Once he left, Harvey Pierre allegedly came in to essay her. And she Bro. recalls having a hard time breathing because of how he was forcing himself onto oh her. Oh, my god! She was in pain. It wasn't until they were, quote, you know, more or less done with her. These she fell to, to the bathroom to floor and crawled into a fetal position. These need to go under the She jail. doesn't even remember anything else, but vaguely, she's just on a plane back to Michigan. These niggas need to go under When this jail. lawsuit was filed in the end of 2023, Harvey Pierre has denied the accusations against him. Hey, shut up. This is a tale of fiction. I've never participated in or witnessed nor heard of anything like this ever. These disgusting allegations are false and a desperate attempt for financial gain. I will vigorously protect my reputation and defend my name. Those who know me recognize these claims are not true. Diddy's attorneys filed a motion to dismiss, calling it, quote, a decades-old tale, a baseless claim in an effort to extract an undeserved financial recovery. You don't Fiction, even talk like a desperate that. desperate attempt. But this is what Jane Doe alleges happened in 2003, Ugh. the same year Diddy is back together with Kim Porter. And it's very likely that Kim Porter did not know about these incidents because Jean, the former bodyguard, states, Kim would have incidents with Diddy where he would... Allegedly convinced Kim to partake in group activities and do things that she did not want to do. Have Freak intimate off. relations with men that Freak she did off. not want to. It's, the way that he describes it and alleges is similar to Cassie's freak-offs. I don't know. And it appears that Diddy had a high level of control over Kim's life and what she was privy to, so likely she didn't know any of this. One supposed industry professional alleges that they saw Kim and Diddy at the 2003 MTV Awards red carpet. And she claims, and again, this is just an allegation, but... I remember specifically how controlling he was over her. He was literally just sitting there staring at her hair. He wasn't happy with it. The way that the curl went one direction, he was like, I don't care if I miss the whole show. We're not leaving until we get this curl right. Bro. About her hair. This nigga is crazy. She claims on the inside, she just thought, wow, this guy's so controlling. The same insider shares a story that allegedly takes place in New York City. Again, just an allegation, but... One time I went to their Park Avenue apartment to work. Kim Porter had this jewelry person arrive and she picked out jewels for the evening to wear. Mm -hmm. They were going to an event and it took hours to get her ready. And then she kept waiting for Diddy to come home so that they could go to the event together. We were sitting there for hours, but he never came. So she never went out to the event. What the she just went to sleep instead. What the fuck? Mike Curry, a former artist signed with Bad Boy, said... Their relationship was a lot. I remember Kim used to go through a lot of stuff. If you live around them, you get to see the toxic relationship. I think every relationship he had that I experienced around him was like that. Gene Deal, again, the former bodyguard, states that throughout the years, Kim always had suspicious injuries, broken noses, bruises, ankle injuries. Interestingly enough, Gene Deal also alleges that Diddy was never aggressive with Jennifer Lopez. He states that J-Lo's mom already hated Diddy, Oh, you wouldn't dare touch a Latina girl like that, but you just beating all you just beating up on all these black women, huh? Just 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 assaulting and beating. But you wouldn't touch except for that other girl, huh? The you just you wouldn't dare touch J Lo. Really? Really? Okay. The, all right. And it said that he wasn't willing to handle the backlash if he were to put his hands on her. Gene insinuates that he likely knew if she told anyone it would be over for him. Well, so the way that Gene describes it is it seems like he is very fond of Kim Porter. And I think he means this with as much enlightening, insightful information as he can allegedly give. But he's stating that Diddy knows who to mess with. JLo was not dependent on him. She was already a star by this point. Mm. Whereas the women that he does physically yeah. go after, allegedly, are women that are dependent on him. Yeah, Bro, I mean, that's what typical the behavior for someone like, you yeah. know, that's all about crazy. the power. He would even say in an interview that Kim was in with him while they're dating, he says, Do you really think God meant for a man to just have one wife or a woman to just have one husband? Do you really think God meant it that way? Kim snaps back, Do you really want me having sex with another man? You want that to happen? Huh. No, but. God made us different. She explains, that is such a cop-out. I could just be like you, but I just choose not to be. Mm. Well, sometimes things happen, and this is the most monogamous I've ever been in my life. That's all I'm trying to say. Kim would later tell the reporter, he's what? giving, gentle, and sensitive, especially with me. He's really a good guy with a big heart. I get to see that, and I'm really thankful I get to see that. Until one day, Diddy comes home, and Kim Porter is gone. 
So they get back together in 2003. Oh, Around the end of 2007, she leaves. Unbeknownst to Diddy, while he's out of town at the BET Awards show, uh -oh. Kim calls her closest girlfriends over. They pop open a bottle of wine. Cheers, clink, it's time to pack. Kitchen table, nursery furniture, the cars, everything is leaving with Kim. Oh, shit. I hope that he came home to an empty home. But I, I, I'm not sure how much she took. After 12 years, Kim Porter finally walks out on Diddy. Mm. 12 years on and off. She's done being his romantic partner. I mean, she will always be the mother to his children. They will co-parent, but she is so done. Mm -hmm. A little over 10 months prior to her moving out, Kim Porter was pregnant with Diddy's twins. Oh, sure. They had rekindled their on and off relationship again, like I said, and they had done all these interviews. They were in a very public relationship and she had done recent interviews after getting pregnant about, you know, I know Diddy like I know my kids. And just talking about how what they had was different. Mm -hmm. And then one day Kim's friend calls her and she sounds uncomfortable, I'm sure. And she tells her, basically, Diddy had cheated on her with another woman. And that woman had recently just gave birth to Diddy's child. Yo, this nigga. Do we know who? Sarah Chapman. And she gave birth to Chance Combs. She was born just like five, six months before the twins were born. Wow. Mm. To which Kim had enough. She never confronted him while she was pregnant. She just said, it's not an original script. He's not. She be holding it. She really be holding it down, bro. Like, she just don't say nothing while he just doing his thing. And she's like not saying anything. That is. That is very commendable, dude. Like, holy shit. Like, she don't say nothing. She just goes and does what she needs to do. Like, that's fire. I'm going to be honest with you. Not the first man who has cheated. He's not the first man who's had a baby outside of the relationship. He's not the originator of this. But at this point in my life, I have girls now. It's a different program. Fair enough. The worst part is he didn't tell her until after she gave birth. So she's giving him the time to fess up, own up, because he has a literal newborn baby. So just tell her. Sarah gives birth to Chance Combs July of 2006. The twins are born December of 2006. She says, he told me he may have gotten himself in a situation and he may have fathered another child outside the relationship. You Kim said she already knew and responded, really? Well, I already knew and I'm glad you decided to be a man. I was like, dude, this is so whack. I can't even respect you right now. And for me, once the respect is gone, I'm not even listening to you anymore. <laughs> Later, the same magazine, Essence, will ask her, you left in quite a dramatic way, you know? How was it? The furniture, the cars, leaving, I mean, gas. Why did it go down like that? Because there was no other way. You think he would have let me walk out the door? He wouldn't have wanted me to go. Were you scared? No, not at all. But I wanted to be dramatic. I wanted him to hell. know I wasn't breaking up with him for two weeks or maybe leaving for two days. If I pack up everything, twins and all, it means I'm out. Puffy's an action person, not a talk person. Mm. So I had to have an action. Telling him, babe, I'm leaving, just wasn't going to do it. In another interview, yeah, she states, mainly I'm a mom first, so that is the most important to me. Mm -hmm. So everything else kind of comes after that. And it seems like that's exactly what she planned on doing. Focus on her career, her children, after the breakup. In an interview with Essence, Kim was asked, if Diddy called you today and said, I want to get married right now, would you? She says, I would say no. And not because I don't want to get married, but because he's not ready for marriage. When I get married, I want to stay married. I want both parties to be on the same page at the same time and to leave a certain type of behavior behind. That's a commitment I don't think he's ready for. <laughs> Diddy would also stay around this time. Kim is an incredible mother to our children. We've been part of each other's lives for many years and I've always admired her courage and strength. We're the best of friends. You know, I got three girls, three boys, and they're really kind, great people. They got a lot of love in their hearts. I'm the luckiest man in the world. So she walked out just one day after finding out that Diddy was cheating. Yes. But Diddy never went after her. Like, you know how, you know, he's very controlling. Uh, yes. He's very, man yeah. It seems like he did. He did. Oh. But she's like, no, I'm done. Don't come for me. And okay. That's the allegation. It seems like he did. Mm. Yeah. Now, Kim also lets it be known that they were on amicable terms. She said that they're still friends. He calls every single day. She told a reporter, you know, we're committed to our children, even if we couldn't commit to each other. I mean, it's clear none of them want to say too much publicly about what happened. And like Kim said, she's going to focus on her career. And perhaps one of that is acting. She was in a pilot episode for a show called Single Ladies, where her character is a snarky former, quote, video vixen. <laughs> 
Video what? Video vixen, I guess, is talent that's hired for music videos, typically. Like Melissa Side note, Ford. a few netizens have been reposting this scene as they think it's just an eerie coincidence. Kim's character on the show says, and again, this is a fictional show. I found God and he told me to make a change. So I'm a writer now. I'm writing a tell-all book about my years of being a video vixen. I got lots of stories about lots of rappers and I'm about to get paid. I am in no way of insinuating that taken down book is true or not. So far, there isn't (laughs) strong evidence of how the author received the hard drives. So I do question its validity. But if the lawsuits filed against Diddy are proven to be true, it does seem that Kim Porter would have a lot to say. Mm. Gene, the former bodyguard, would even say the violence towards women was a consistent pattern in his belief and opinion. He alleges that he heard that Diddy had beat Nisa Hilton, the first mother of his child, Justin's mother, so hard that she allegedly once was so scared she crawled under a car to get away from him. According to Gene's allegations, he just does not understand how someone beats someone to that point that they desperately crawl under a car. That level of violence is a lot, which again doesn't mean that Kim wrote a tell-all Speaking of Misa Hilton, Justin's mother, April Lampros is another victim who has since filed a lawsuit against Diddy. She had received an invite in the mail, a Father's Day celebration for Diddy after the birth of his first biological child, Justin Combs, that he shares with Misa Hilton. So this is before he's dating Kim Porter. So this is the 90s? Yes. Okay. Dear friends, join us in celebrating the original Bad Boy's first Father's Day celebration. For this occasion, there is a dress code. No jeans or sneakers will be permitted. It's a Father's Day party. April is a student from FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. And this is all awkward because she is allegedly seeing Diddy romantically and Diddy just had a child with Misa Hilton. And the whole thing is weird. Very okay. April Lambros states in her lawsuit that he was just love bombing her constantly, bringing her gifts, bringing her to the studio to impress her. Even a month after the Father's Day event, she was invited to see performances by Usher and Notorious B.I.G. thanks to Diddy. And at first it all seems sweet. He just seems like he always wants to be around, flying her from New York to Atlanta to Miami, just wherever he was, he wanted her her to be around. But then he told her that they have to keep their relationship a secret because she alleges, quote, he did not want anyone to know that he was seeing her because she's a white woman. The lawsuit goes into detail about four alleged essay incidents. The first, April alleges she went to meet with Diddy at a bar in Soho. He introduces her to a female friend of his. She remembers having a few sips of her drinks and they all left for a hotel nearby and she just had this feeling of uneasiness in the hotel room. She remembers laying in bed when Diddy forced himself on top of her. Bro, did this nigga ever have any healthy fucking relationships with somebody? Like, how is every single one of your relationships end- ending like this or this shit happens? Like, this shit, this shit, is, this shit is wild. This shit is fucking wild. Every one of your relationships ended with some shit like this, except for J-Lo? What in the actual hell? Of her. God She leaves, dang. and she told herself she would never talk to Diddy again. But he continues love-bombing her and telling her how advantageous her life will be, her career will take off, as long as Diddy is on her side. So, mm. I mean, she's studying to get into the fashion world, which he is a big, prominent figure of at that time. Mm-hmm. She thought that perhaps the first incident was... Maybe she misremembered. Then it happened again, the second incident. Hey, she alleges damn that this thing. happened in a parking garage near his apartment in the city. They were going to dinner. Well, Diddy's a little drunk. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but I, I didn't mean to say that. Girl, you did not misremember nothing. That nigga did that. He did, you didn't misremember anything. And as they're headed towards his car, he just grabs her out of nowhere, forces her to kneel on the concrete in the parking lot, unzips his pants, and forces her to perform what orally. What the fuck? She said that she could see the parking attendant witness this horrific assault, but Diddy allegedly did not care. And once he's done, she's crying and he just tells her, get up. She states once again, she tried to distance herself and then it didn't work. Then the third time, she alleges at this point, Diddy and Kim Porter had started dating. She alleges in the lawsuit, again, this is an allegation, that she was called to his apartment where Kim Porter and two other people were there. They all go to the club that night, and when they get back, they continue drinking. He insists that Kim Porter and April take ecstasy, is what the lawsuit alleges. 
She said he essentially forced her to take the pill. He was forcing his hand so far into her throat, she almost gagged. And even afterwards, he's checking under their tongues like a psych ward nurse. She alleges in the lawsuit that Diddy forced the two of them, April and Kim, to engage in intimate acts while he sat watching and self-pleasuring. Towards the end, he, quote, sat close by master for some time before pushing Kim Porter off Miss Lampros, April, and forcing himself inside and essaying April. Yeah. April said that she just went completely numb and emotionally checked out. And it wasn't until Diddy kicked her out a few hours later that she felt all this disgust and shame. Uh. And she alleges the crazy thing is, even after all of this, he had the audacity to invite April to Kim Porter's birthday party. <laughs> the fourth time, she no alleges, shame, was after bro. he broke up with Kim Porter to date J-Lo. And while he's actively in a public relationship with J-Lo, he forces her to his apartment and tries to essay her once more. She manages to leave. And mm. she thought that was it. But just like Talia, she said in 2023... April's boyfriend states that he was just approached by this random redacted man. So they redacted the name, but it's clear that they know who, Mm -hmm. who told him along the lines of you really should reconsider dating that girl because I personally saw videos of her having intimate relations with Diddy. April alleges that's how she discovered he had filmed some of the encounters. She didn't know that he had filmed it and she didn't know that he had shown it to people. Other key allegations in her lawsuit are Mr. Combs does not like the word no. Now, one significant detail, or I guess insignificant detail, would be a better description. In the lawsuit, April alleges, quote, Miss Lampros recalls Mr. Combs' penis being adolescently in both length and width. Eventually, after Kim Porter, Diddy goes on to have a very public relationship with Cassie Why? Ventura. Jean Deal, the former bodyguard, says, I didn't know Cassie, but I knew someone like Cassie. Why you add that in there? You just had to add that this nigga got a small dick? Like, what? Why? I didn't need to know that. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't need to. I didn't need to know that. I knew Kim Porter. Which obviously, there's a lot of discourse here about him having three mothers to his children. Mm-hmm. Diddy does argue, interestingly, on the Wendy Williams show. Keep this in mind because Wendy Williams comes back again in episode four of this Diddy series. He argues that he met the mother of his children, all three of them, Kim Porter, Misa Hilton, and Sarah Chapman, in the same year. He says, I met all of them in the same year, so I've known them in the same amount of time. We were all friends. I wasn't running around through my career and every couple of years just being like a new with a new person. Yeah. These are people that have been my friends. Then I would get my heart broken, and then my friend would be there, and I would fall in love with my friend, and then I would get my heart broken. You're a liar. Which is a crazy statement. A yeah, how is lie. that better? You yeah. know? I, I met all of them in the same year, so I've known huh? all of them the same amount of time. We, we were friends. I, no, 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 no. He also said she specifically like, about having daughters. He has three sons and now four daughters. Yeah. The youngest being Love Combs was born in 2022. This next statement is crazy. It took me to have daughters to really know how to treat a woman. And I'm still learning. But I guess they didn't teach him that much because in a... This nigga is insane. Another appearance on The Breakfast Club. He's there sitting next to his son, Christian Combs, who is the one being sued by the yacht stewardess, Grace. This is what he says about dating. And by the way, Christian is like a teenager at this point. So he's like consciously aware. And he looks up to his dad. He's his role model. Mm. He says, if I'm in a relationship with you, 25% of your time, you're just going to be like, oh man, I hate being here. This guy cheated on me. He lied on me. But then there's 75% of the time, I'm going to make you the happiest woman in the whole wide world. I'm gonna- That's not how the 80-20 rule works. That's not how that works. Don't, don't believe that shit. I'm going to be there to support your dreams. I'm going to be there to hold you, listen to you. I'm going to be there to be your best friend. And I Drug promise you'll you smile the most. You know who I am. Uh. This is what it is. Which deal do you choose? No. Which is just the craziest thing ever. But Diddy claims he really loves his children. So for his children, he has started a new company called Combs Cartel, which is very questionable. It's an umbrella company for the joint ventures of his children. His first son, Quincy, who he adopted, that he has with Kim Porter. Hmm. He is acting. He recently starred in the Netflix special Holiday Calendar. Hmm. Justin is Diddy's first biological child with Misa Hilton. He used to run a segment on Revolt TV, which is a media company that used to be owned by yeah, Diddy, done. called Respectfully Justin, where he interviews celebrities. But like he does, you know what? I'm not going to go there. <laughs> he doesn't really interview the celebrities. He has a co-host that does all the talking. He just kind of is there. Mm. And so- Respectfully Justin. Wait a second. 
Respectfully, Justin. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I, okay. I, I was about to say that that shit's definitely the the co-host is Justin L.A. Boy. I was I was about to say because I I don't remember seeing Justin Combs on that show. The, the nigga the nigga that be making memes on Twitter about the respectfully nigga. Yeah, I was I I was about to say. Yeah, wait. I know you. I know you know. <laughs> So people have called him out for being a nepo baby because you're not really doing anything on the show. You exactly. just got a show because your dad owns the network. Pretty much. Right. I digress. <laughs> then there's Christian Combs, the first child with Kim Porter. Christian is taking more after his dad, trying to get into music. Musically, he goes by the name King Combs. He has a song called Can't Stop, Won't Stop featuring Kodak Black. I think that was his biggest song. I like this nigga shit. Now that, 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 that this nigga is... Mm, 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 mm. mm. Uh, 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 uh. I don't like that shit no more, nigga. Fuck out of here. But I think the most talked about song is a song he recently released five months ago. It's called No Diddy? It's called Pick a Side. Uh, Pick a Side. I didn't hear that shit. This was released after the feds raided Diddy's homes, but before he's arrested. Mm. The more relevant lyrics go like this. I dare one of you N-words scream out No Diddy. Might see me with some pretty hoes with me, but ain't no ho in me. Police raid the crib like we selling crack. We ain't doing that, but we out here selling tracks, multi-million dollar plaques. All that woofing on the net, internet, I guess. Well, now it's time to show N, steady talking to the fam, and we don't even know. But go ahead, play one call away. We ain't sparing no. Is it is it bad that I like find like a little bit of fun and hearing stephanie just <laughs> recite lyrics <laughs> oh my god knock them walls down like when them fetty boys ran in both of our cribs Ooh. too bad they ain't know we bought the one next door because that's the one they missed this nigga dumb wait wait what did he just say about next door this he's saying first of all all of you guys yapping on the internet we're not uh -huh. sparing anyone this is like a freaking war Huh. Then he goes on to state, like the feds raided our crib acting like we're selling crack, but we're not. We're selling tracks, but also jokes on them because they missed one because we live they right had purchased beside two homes in Miami, it seems, uh -huh. on Star Island. And I guess he's insinuating that the feds didn't check the new home or something that they bought next door. Really? He's flexing about that. Oh, mm. just you wait till the comments. Mm. Now, there seems to be references to 50 Cent and Eminem. We will get to that in part four, where we go through all of Diddy's friends and then everyone who has hated him since day one. Because there's a lot of celebrities who have been nigga, beefing bro. with him since day one. 50 hates that Now, the main nigga, comments bro. on this diss track read, this shit is whack. <laughs> Others point out that he's grown up in such a privileged household, he can't even make a good diss track. They comment, wow, we're really making it out the gated community with this one, fam. <laughs> Another comments snitched on himself and hit us with this itsy bitsy spider flow. <laughs> yeah, he does like a nursery rhyme beginning. <laughs> they praying on our downfall another time again. After the rain for the sun gonna shine again. Hey bro. Don't bust no you turns cause yo, we yo, 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 Stephanie, what the fuck? Why you put this? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, others say, when you make a poem in primary school and then add a backtrack. Oh my gosh. In the lyrics, like I said, he talks about the feds missing the second home in Miami they allegedly purchased. A lot of netizens found that hilarious, saying, how do you snitch on yourself in your own diss track? LOL, he said, don't forget the house next door. The feds just raided two of their house. Yeah. And he's making a diss track on the public as well as the feds. The feds? Yes. Yeah. What is going on right now? Yes, which a lot of people have said, you know, cops? Okay, maybe. The feds? Nobody really f***s with the feds. Like, that's just not something you do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're, like, being investigated for a RICO conspiracy. Yeah, racketeering. Exactly. Like, what the fuck? It's not gonna age well. The feds, they might overlook a lot of things, but they will not overlook things like racketeering. Right. People comment, how are you going to make a diss track where you're not really dissing anybody, only name dropping and then self snitching? This sounds less like a diss track and more like a confession. Mm -hmm. Others are commenting, yeah, well, we did pick a side and it's not with the oily diddler. A lot of people think it's just so bizarre. It really just shows how untouchable I don't they know think why they are. He did that. Because <clears throat> why would you tease the feds like that? Yeah. Gene, the former bodyguard, states about the song. It's like he put another battery in the feds back. Don't play with the feds, bro. You right. might think it's petty, but it's not. You do not agitate a lion with a pork chop. And that's what that kid did. Mm. <laughs> Others have commented. Christian Combs said, pick a side. The feds said, pick a cell. <sighs> yeah. 
So he's in a lot of hot water. Justin But was. Where yes. is he right now? He's actually just seen partying with his girlfriend. Oh. Y'all want to know something funny about his girlfriend? That's Raven Tracy. Y'all want to know who Raven Tracy was uh was with? Ian Connor. Go ahead and look up. Go, go ahead, search up Ian Connor thirty three. Just just do it. This shit is. Oh my gosh, bro. This, oh, sorry if I was supposed. I didn't mean to dox, but this shit. You just search it up. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's still out right now. There's no criminal charges against him. It's just the civil lawsuit against him with Grace. Yeah. Then you have Chance Combs, Sarah Chapman's daughter. I watched a lot of interviews with Chance Combs in there, and honestly, she seems really, really smart. Hmm. Like she just turned 18. She's very beautiful. It seems cool. to have a good head on her shoulders. Then you have Delilah and Jesse, the twins. They were born five months after Chance. It seems like all the three of them are very close in age, but also just in bond. Mm -hmm. They're currently aspiring to be full-time models. Cool. They joined their father on the stage for the 2023 VMAs, where he sang, I'll be missing you which is a song we will cover in part three because Yo. it is in reference to a murder that he is allegedly, the conspiracy is he was involved in. Oh my These girls gosh. are stunning. I mean, people have said they look just like their mother, Kim. Ugh. They also seem really down to earth and I'm sure it's, it's very difficult for them to navigate all of this right now. I believe the two twins are still minors until December, if I'm not mistaken. What would y'all do if y'all dad was this nigga? Like, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking like, bro, why in the fuck? Why did you do all this shit? Like real shit, bro. Like, <clears throat> like you, you think that your dad is like your hero, but like he's out here doing super villain shit. Like I, I, I don't know how I would feel so embarrassed. I'll be like, yo, well, I came out this nigga's nuts, bro. Like, I'm tied with him forever. That's my dad, bro. What the fuck? What the fuck? Like, yo. Taken. So Ugh. navigating all of this while being so young, I'm sure <sighs> it's very hard. And then you have the youngest, youngest, like maybe two years old right now, I think. Mm -hmm. Love, Sean Combs. A baby girl that Diddy shares with a woman named Dana Tran. Oh. Some sources describe her as a model. Other sources state she's a cybersecurity expert. Mm. Regardless, she was born in 2022. Hmm. He actually just posted an Instagram photo for her while he's in prison. Yeah. He like, posted <laughs> an Instagram photo of the two-year-old baby? Yes, it's her birthday. It was recently wow. her birthday. How does he, how does he I'm have sure someone, Instagram? Diddy. Maybe someone would, did it for him. Oh, yeah. Okay. Nobody really knew that Diddy was even expecting another child. In fact, most netizens thought that he was in a interesting relationship with young Miami of City Girls, but he just like randomly posted on Twitter, I'm so blessed to welcome my baby girl, love Sean Combs into the world. God is This the greatest. Is... So I will say out of the seven kids, aside from Christian and Justin, who have been named in lawsuits. Mm. How old are they now, Sean? What, Justin? Oh, um, I think Justin is 30. Christian is 25, 26. Oh, okay. Quincy's even older. Okay. And then Chance just turned 18, if I'm not hey. mistaken. Yeah, so particularly with the girls and the youngest kids, there's rightfully a lot of sympathy out there from for them from the public because likely they don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And if anything, I'm sure even a little bit of that controlling behavior from Diddy was in his parenting. It couldn't have been easy just growing up with the media, the press. And mm -hmm. it's definitely not easy for them now with, unfortunately, the whole situation. And I don't know how good of a father Diddy was. They state that he was a very good father, but Diddy once told a reporter, somebody gave me multiple choices early on. Have a smooth working relationship, have a personal life, or be in the music industry. I chose be in the music industry. He also told another Vibe reporter once, anything I've wanted, I can say I've gotten it. Bro. Diddy was born in Harlem. His father was allegedly an associate of a legendary heroin kingpin, Fucking Frank, Frank Lucas. Lucas. He was unfortunately gracious. murdered in the 70s, which means Diddy and his mom, they're left to fend for themselves. And Diddy says in an interview, he remembers waking up in Harlem one day. There were just so many roaches on my face. And I was like, no, I'm not no. going to do that. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be somebody. Hmm. He later states in another interview, there was 15 roaches on his face, to which he says, people was like, how do you know it's 15? I was like, if you have 15 roaches on your face, you would know it was around 15 roaches on your face. He says, my first job was a paper boy. I was a bus boy. They wouldn't even let me be a waiter. Do you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a waiter so bad, but mm. I just always had that hustle. 
even being a paper boy, he said he's not going to do it like everybody else. He states that when you're a paper boy, you get your predetermined route. You make about a dollar per paper you deliver, but because you only get a certain number of houses in your route, you're capped out. Mm. But Diddy thought, what if I'm not capped out? He goes, reaches out to all the paper boys in the neighboring areas. I have a proposal. You let me deliver your papers for you. You do nothing. And we split the profits. Sure, you could make a dollar a paper and you're working all day or you could make 50 cents a paper and do nothing. He said, even though his dad was murdered when he was a toddler, quote, even if we don't know our parents, we still have their DNA in us. We have their genes. I have his hustler's mentality, his hustler spirit, his drive, his determination, his swag. And you're he nasty. He starts off you and just he have... later tells Forbes, so you just, I am so, fooling around. So, so I'm wait, building assets. Wait, wait. He says, I had to go in knowing I'm going to be the... So I guess the, the one thing that you've taken is just... You, you, that's yourself. It's just you were a, a fucking... Cre- okay. You know what? Never mind. Greatest. I still have to say that to myself and I have to believe that at the end of the day, I'm going to be the greatest. At first, I was shy. Then one day I realized Three, that shy shit blood. isn't going to get me anywhere in this life right here. In this world, sometimes people say I'm cocky and arrogant, but that's what comes with it. I also say you're a rapist. He also talks about obstacles and how he loves challenges. He says, it's like this mountain is three times bigger in front of us. It's got a volcano coming down, rocks, avalanches. And you're like, yo, do you want to climb this mountain? Or do you just want to go find shelter and ride this thing out and just die? And he loves money. Maybe he gets it from his dad, but he loves money. And he's skilled at making it. He was estimated to be worth close to a billion dollars. His estimated earnings in 2023 alone are ballparked to be around $90 million. Fuck. Making him Forbes' number 14 highest paid entertainer. Fuck. After Jay-Z, Kanye West, the creators of South Park, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Reese Witherspoon. What? what? How? Like, what, what, where is the money coming from? He had a Biggie. tequila line that he got a big payout ah. for as well. Mm. Yes. I see. Now, just to give you context on how much $90 million is, that's about a quarter million dollars a day. He's also very skilled at enjoying his money. He owns that private jet that cost him $60 million, a real estate portfolio nearing $100 million. He owns... Right. So he has a yes. $60 million private jet, yes. right? Last time you say the jet disappeared from the navigation system, right? The tracking, yes. Like, oh, it was recently spotted in New Zealand. This shit just appeared. It just spawned. This shit just this shit just spawned in like his so GTA. With it, like what happened? He just removed it from the system. Yes, and his lawyers are telling the judges that he's willing to sell his private jet to show the judge that he's not at flight risk. So please give him bail. The no. judge said no. No, no bail. No, no. He owns a massive painting that he bought at auction for twenty one million dollars. It's an original Kerry James Marshall. <gasps> it's incredibly oh beautiful. Gosh, he owns fuck? original Andy Warhol's. Key- Damn. Okay. Well. So I got to wait for my shit to... He owns that shit too? What the fuck? Okay, I was able to get my camera back on. Got it to cool off. And I got a new light. So I guess this looks more professional. I guess. I don't know. Let's continue this. Let's do this. Freaky ass nigga. Keith Herrings. There was one time he was being interviewed talking about how excited he is about being a father. And Kim was pregnant with twins. Conan O'Brien was like, are you registered with uh, Kids Are Us? Hmm? To which Diddy looks slightly offended and tells him he's registered at Mercedes. Which is likely a joke, but still very extravagant nonetheless. He had a famous butler once who would Ooh. walk around just holding a umbrella over his head. Was that Fonsworth? His name was Fonsworth Bentley. <laughs> I he- knew it was Fonsworth. Oh my gosh. The fact that I know these names is so hilarious. Just like walk around with a umbrella. He's funny. And recently prior to... No, Fonsworth is funny as hell. I hope he's not doing no freaky ass stuff. That would make me kind of sad, actually. I'm not going to lie. That would make me very sad. He was arrested. Diddy just announced that he purchased two of the largest cannabis companies in the country for nearly $200 million, making oh. him the owner of the largest black-owned cannabis company in the U.S. Really? Wow. I don't know what's going to happen to that now. Shit. But he would also th- say things like, smoke. I want to make the most money. I want to be known for giving the most money away. <laughs> I feel like I've heard that a yeah. few times. SPF. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which he's sharing, is that true? Sharing the sale with? Yeah, sharing the same unit with Diddy. The crypto fraud Mm. of FTX crypto, yeah. He's in the same detention center in Brooklyn. And they actually share the same attorney, which we will cover in part four. 
Maybe they're best buds. Maybe. He said in a previous interview, I'm the one driving around in the Rolls Royce with this hat turned, going down Fifth Avenue with the music booming in the back, walking into Gucci, shutting down the store, buying everything at the motherfucking same time, driving up to Harlem and giving out $100 bills to homeless people. Cool. I'm not going to lie to you. I had a taste of wealth and I was going to do anything I could to protect that. I just remember these days of Roach's crime. I don't like I don't like him saying these things. I'm, I'm going to do everything to protect that. Nothing can stop me. Like, damn, bro, it's not the best thing to say, bro. Calling on me, and it's just like I need to focus on this money right now because nobody else has the opportunity that I have. Mm. Which again, not a controversial statement, but a source close to Diddy, almost alluding to that, says that to Diddy, it's not even just about money; it's about power. Ugh. And ultimately, it appears that Diddy wants power. They say this about him: there's a certain narcissism an attitude of objectifying not just women, but all people and wanting to be with other men who enjoy moving people around like chess pieces. Who said this? An insider source. But Diddy claims that the only thing that got him to be worth close to a billion dollars, the credit goes to being a father. <laughs> Fatherhood taught him patience and grace. Wow. And I'm sure he believes he is a great father, yeah, which does. is why his son, Christian Combs, is getting sued yeah, by like, Grace, the yacht stewardess who claims she was essayed by Christian Combs while working on the victorious yacht December of 2022. Grace was w? 25 at the time. He was 24 at the time. And honestly, her lawyer had it out for Christian. Oh, they write it in the lawsuit. Defendant Christian Combs is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. Unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Defendant C. Combs, Christian Combs, who has seen... You know, one thing people are going to do, bro, is talk about your career and try to shit on it any way, shape, or form they can. Holy fuck. <laughs> ...taken after his father and the family business of reckless partying, drugging others, sexual violence, and other illegal conducts. Mm. She alleges, paraphrasing here, but like the lot of the whole family were weird. The lawsuit alleges a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and A-list celebrities oh were rotating on the yacht. Oh. Staff were often treated with disrespect. It created an extremely hazardous environment. Mm. Also in the lawsuit, there's this really weird part where Grace alleges in the lawsuit that she was tending to the yacht. And I guess the family, they were all playing a game. I don't know who was present during this game, but it seems that Diddy and his mom, Janice, were present. Janice mm -hmm. Combs. And I don't know if Diddy was dared, but somehow the conversation in the game leads to him taking off his pants so that his private parts are exposed and he's sitting right next to his mom and he does it. This thing is insane. Like, he's insane, bro. Like, this nigga is insane. Hmm. Which it's about some is definitely strange. Side note, a lot of people think his relationship with his mom is strange. A new clip has surfaced where Diddy is with his mom and they're both hooked up on IVs. Oh, shit. Which Cassie what? has included in her lawsuit that after freak-offs, they would need to get IVs the next day from all the drug usage. Hey, gang. I'm just saying that's a parallel. It's been alleged by Cassie. I mean, no, I'm not going no, I'm not going to say nothing about that. No, nope. nope. You know, and these could be completely different things. You know, not everyone who gets IVs do freak offs. So in the video, he introduces his mom and kisses her on the lips, which is inherently not sexual. I guess it depends on each person's boundaries. Mm. It's just weird. Mm. He also apparently brags about his mom and taking his mom to strip clubs. So there's that. Gene, the former bodyguard, says the two of them have a fascinating relationship. What he brings thing? up an allegation that has been circulating recently that Diddy's mother owned a modeling agency when he was younger. So okay. after his father was killed, they needed to make money. So she opens up a modeling agency. But the allegation is that perhaps during the day it's a modeling agency, perhaps at night it's sex work. Oh my gosh. The, some further allegations allege that she was running a full on brothel out of their home when Diddy was a kid. Oh, okay. Gene, the former bodyguard, just brings up what he claims he saw. And what he thought was strange about Diddy and his mom's relationship. One, he claims Diddy would describe his mother in odd, potentially sexual ways, bragging about how she can stand up and bend over and put her palms on the ground. All right, bro. But it was, I guess, in a sexual context. All right, weird. bro. All right, bro. You, Allegedly. Bro. Two, they would kiss. Nigga, nigga, no bite, no bro. <sighs> you know, sometimes I'll be thinking, what be going on in these households? To how this person becomes this way. I'm not saying it to excuse any of this nasty behavior. 
I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck been going on. Why are you talking about your mom like this? I don't know the type of relationship, but I'm going to just say it's it's odd. I'm not talking about my mom bending over and putting her palms on the ground. I'm, I, I don't want to know these things. Like, yo. It's on the lips, which is evidenced by the live stream. Okay. Three, he alleges his mom would wear the same white nail polish that Cassie alleged Diddy would like to see during freak offs. Which, side note, if you listen to part one of this four-part series, you know that another alleged girlfriend of Diddy's went on a podcast to allege that she was abused by him. Mm -hmm. She also had on white nail polish. Mm. Some people have pointed to the fact that young Miami of City Girls, when she was dating Diddy, had white nail polish on. Yes. Mm. Gene pinkish. continues to allege, what's crazy to me is that him and his mother had this, I don't want to get too deep, man, this Oedipus complex thing. I was Side note, say the Oedipus complex is a theory that children will feel feelings of desire towards their opposite sex parents. For boys, there are unconscious sexual attractions towards the mother, which creates a hostility with the father. Question, what is, I wonder what the other side is called, because this, this boy mom thing that I'm seeing on TikTok is, is, uh, is rearing its ugly head. I thought I, I honestly thought we got over that topic a couple years ago, but it's still going on. Uh, hey, bro, I don't, I don't know, bro. And vice versa, whom oh. they just view same parents as their rival is the theory. Gene continues, I'm looking at him and his mother on the couch. Both of them are getting IVs after one of Diddy's parties, allegedly, because I wasn't there. I wouldn't know. My whole thing about this thing is I'm not saying she was ever at a freak off or she was ever at that type of party. But you can't tell me Miss Janice Combs, who is always at the regular parties, didn't mm. know nothing about the freak off parties. Yeah, I'm not even going to lie, gang. You, your mom going to ask you questions like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, it don't even matter how old you are. You, I'm, I'm pretty sure when I'm old as hell, my mom going to be asking me questions. She'll be like, what is going on? Because she's still my mother, you know? So it's like, are we, you, you, we, we think his mom not finna be like, yo, what y'all doing when everybody leaves? What's going on? Like, I find that very hard to believe. I find that very hard to believe, in all honesty. Especially him talking like that. I'm like, bro, y'all talk about a lot. You, 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 his dad was a, was involved with Frank Lucas. I'm pretty sure. Like, like, bro, what the fuck? That's what Gene says. Gene says he's not saying anything because he doesn't know. He didn't see anything. I don't know either. But he does seem to have a complicated relationship with his mom if Gene's stories are true. Mm. But he also says that he's very aggressive towards his mom. Hmm? Sometimes he heard, allegedly heard Diddy just snap at his mom. Didn't I tell you to stay out my motherfucking business? Oh, well then. Oops. Going off on her, allegedly. Shit, I don't want to talk but about I digress. Grace fire, alleges Myers. in her lawsuit that one night Christian Combs came via tender. So tender is a small boat that takes people from the boat to the land. It's called from tender. the main yacht to the land. And back and forth, like a little water taxi. Uh. He comes, middle of the night, she's on the night shift. So there's only like two people working the whole boat at night. Because mm -hmm. most people are asleep. Right. Yeah. He seemed already high from narcotics and alcohol. She claimed that he was ordering her to pour him shots while he was playing Me and You by Cassie. Yes, by Cassie Ventura. <sighs> this is in 2022. This song would have been over a decade old. And this is his dad's ex-girlfriend. Wow. And I wonder if she's going to talk about Lori Harvey. I believe, wasn't that a thing? I don't remember. I remember Diddy was like talking to one of his son's girlfriends. I think that's Lori Harvey. Please don't quote me on this, but. I don't know, bro. And they had broken up by this point. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, that night, Grace so, alleges she noticed Christian being more attentive to her, which she didn't like. It didn't feel appropriate. Mm. And he keeps insisting that she take a shot with him, which is not the most uncommon thing. Although she didn't want to. She thought, well, if I just take one shot, he's going to let me go back and let me do my damn job. But no, she takes the shot. shot and he keeps asking her to sit beside him, help keep him company, which, of course, is not in her job description, nor does <laughs> she want to. <laughs> she remains polite and insists on leaving, but he's getting more aggressive, grabbing her arm violently, insisting more shots, more shots. Yo. This is nighttime. She barely has any crew members. She can't find help right now. Oh, and no. she's starting to feel the effects of this one shot. She thought it was spiked. The situation escalates. Grace alleges Christian starts touching her on her private areas over her clothes and tried kissing her on the neck Ew. and face 
and everyone, everything and everyone starts blurring around her. She feels drugged. Christian and his attorneys have denied the allegations and have called the lawsuit lewd and meritless. Nigga. Whereas Diddy's attorneys have stated that they haven't seen the claims yet, but quote, but we can expect the same kind of manufacturing. My question, I got a question. And I'm going to talk to y'all with the full screen. How many actual false allegations are there with famous niggas? Cause I'm gonna keep it. A, I'm gonna keep it a bean. I have not heard many false allegations when it comes to someone famous. Like you know how they say, like, oh, they're just trying to get a money grab. I haven't heard too many. Like, like for real. If like there's a bunch in this one camp that are coming back to back to back. I'm just like, I'm thinking like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, I honestly don't believe all these people are coming out for this cash, bro. Like, I don't like, I, I, I just like, like I said, like, like I said before, search of Ian Connor 33. Like, I'm, this is a lot of fucking people. This is a lot of people. And obviously, I'm not saying like false allegations is, is not a possibility, but I'm the type of person to try and pay attention to the actual allegations and believe the person because what the fuck like these stories are mad specific and they're very consistent with each other you know like uh like y'all y'all gonna keep denying this shit and this nigga like bro like oh my gosh this whole, like, this fuck a yard, fuck the, like, oh my gosh, this niggas is nasty. Actually, it lies. But a lot of netizens are having a hard time believing that when there is an alleged audio clip transcribed into the lawsuit. So I'm assuming her attorneys have the actual audio that has not been released to the public, mm -hmm. but it's been transcribed into the lawsuit. The audio clip was recorded by Rodney Jones, mm. a producer. Fucking little Rod. Oh my gosh. Lil Rod, that was brought onto the yacht to help create Diddy's newest album that was released in 2023, ironically named The Love Album. Mm -hmm. Rodney Jones was allegedly ordered to record everything. Mm -hmm. Ordered by who? Diddy. Diddy. Record what? everything. That nigga spilling the beans too. For the creative process, but also potentially for a Hulu show. Like a camera and everything, tape rolling type of thing? Just on his phone. Because hmm. okay. I guess they could include it into shows or into music uh -huh. videos. Okay. There's an audio recording of the alleged essay. Christian is, yeah. And Christian is telling Grace, yo, it's shot o'clock. Are you talking about, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> okay, y'all, shot o'clock is a, is a thing that people say, like, you know how they be like, it's five o'clock somewhere, shot o'clock, everybody take a shot, da 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 it, It's actually very interesting, like, seeing Stephanie's, reactions to this shit <laughs> but like in this context it sounds mad weird as fuck and i agree with you but that shot o'clock shit is very is very popular the way that this nigga is using this shit is not a good idea you're forcing this girl to drink and this shit no no don't force nobody to drink bro i'm not gonna lie sometimes i i'll ask kyla hey would you like to enjoy a drink with me she say no i'm like all right cool fuck it it's fine. All right, cool. I'm not like, bro, like, if somebody don't want to drink, forcing them to drink, first the fuck of all, forcing someone to drink when they don't want to is not fun. I don't understand why people be forcing people to do shit that they don't want to do. Like, like if you just, like, you reluctantly doing something, I'm like, damn, you was not having fun. I would, like, this is why you take, this is why you take no for an answer. Because, first off, one, respect. Second of all, there's a lot of people that find fun in taking shit from people. That shit is odd. A night that the first night yes. that he came on, yeah, and Little Raw was recording. Yes, there's an audio recording. I don't know if he was in the room, but he has the recording, and I guess he gave it to Grace later. Oh, like he had cameras and stuff. Yes. set up that's yep. recording. Yep, 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 yep. Now Little Rod will sue Diddy as well, yep. which we'll get into right after this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Christian says, "Yo, it's shot o'clock." Grace responds, "I'm no, I'm not doing shot, no. Christian. Everybody, we got to take a shot. I'll just um." Put the, put the ledge. No, 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 take the whole thing. No, you take it as well. Christian tells her, no, 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 take the whole thing, take the whole thing. Grace keeps saying, I'll take the whole shot if you take it as well. So it's likely she said this because mm. she thought it was spiked at this point. Mm. So it's like, you take good the call, shot from the call. same bottle then. Yeah. 
And he said, I ain't gonna lie, I'm not taking nothing. Please, please take the shot. Mm, no. You take this shot with me, boy. If you're if you're drugging me, I'm gonna keep it a bean. If if somebody tries to hand you a drink, make them drink with you. I'm not gonna hold you. If they're trying to force you to drink, bro, tell them to take the drink with you. Cause you ain't got there's no there's no it's better be safe than sorry. If you drugging me, you finna drug yourself. You finna be drugged too, buddy. Huh. 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 Hey. Huh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You take that motherfucking shot with me. You wanna force me to take a shot? That means you ready to drink, buddy. And you gonna drink. And she asks, are you drugging me? Oh. That is terrifying. That's yeah. fucked. And he responds, take the shot. Hey, yo, play another beat one time. So you're just not gonna you're not gonna acknowledge my question? No, I'm not taking the shot. So I guess Fuck. maybe the rod is in the room. Someone's in the room and they start playing me and you in the background. Oh my god. By Cassie. Ugh. Grace tells him, I can't. I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, darling. No, nah, we need you. I'm gonna stop. I have to go. I have to go. Honestly, I'm already losing sleep. I have to go now. You're the best one on the ship, though. What the what fuck? What do you mean? Who's going to replace you? Who's going to replace me? Which sounds like a threat of Ooh. firing her, if I'm not mistaken. Or it could be who's going to replace her tonight. I don't know, but it's that's I'm what the transcript the shows. Grace continues. Excuse me. You don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. <gasps> if you want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Later, Grace states again. Well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Oh. Wow. This part wasn't recorded, but she recalls later that night, Christian kept asking her to find him a place to sleep, which there were no more spare staterooms and cabins, and he refused to go back to shore because I think him and Justin had their own place on shore. Mm -hmm. So she leads him to the cinema because sometimes people would crash there. So she leads him there and sets up a spot for him to sleep, which is her job. Right. And he allegedly blocks her from exiting. She states he became aggressive and started cornering her, groping her. She was pushing him back. He took off his clothes and revealed his private parts oh. while allegedly forcing her to try and get her to go down, pushing her head down. Oh my she gosh. fought him off and finally runs out of the cinema and immediately the next morning, she complained to the yacht's captain, but the captain did not care. What's wilder is Grace alleges that Diddy's employees, his chief of staff, who is right now being compared to Ghislaine Maxwell. I was about, bro, I was about to say the same shit because I didn't, did, mm, mm, mm. Who's chief of staff? Diddy's chief of staff, like okay. his right-hand woman. Oh, okay. is being, madame. A, being compared to Ghislaine Maxwell, mm. which we did cover the Epstein case, by the way. Mm. She found out about it, allegedly told Diddy, and instead of Diddy being a good father like he claims to be, and set the record straight, go to the police, figure it out, discipline Christian, turn him in, whatever it needs, he just pays off the captain to keep him quiet and not cooperate Grace's story, if you will. And eventually she was terminated by that captain. Oh, my god! It gosh. does appear that Grace likely has a strong case considering there's audio from that night. But that brings us to Rodney Jones, Come on. the producer that Little gave Rod. us the audio. He has also filed a lawsuit against Diddy. His lawsuit alleges that he was brought this on to produce Diddy's picture. 2023 album, The Love Album, Off the Grid, and his life has fallen apart since. For over a year, he worked to help produce nine songs on Diddy's album. He states that Diddy always wanted him around to record everything in case he has a spark of creative genius, I guess. I've been working on an album, The Love Album, Off the Grid by Diddy, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time. Diddy will request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And, mm. and the truth is we'll be up for days. He would live with Diddy for months, spending holidays with him, leaving his family to work on this. And he claims because of Diddy's insistence of having everything recorded, he now has hundreds of hours of Diddy's footage and audio recordings. And many of those allegedly depict them engaging in seriously illegal activity, which I mean, the feds are going to have a field day with those files if he really does have those two files. Of them? But that's so fascinating. Yeah. Why would Diddy want him to do that? Maybe his like, head is getting way too big. I think so. This nigga head been big since he came out the motherfucking womb. Like, bro, god dang, man. 
The alleged criminal activity, according to the lawsuit, include drug usage and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, ketamine, GHB, marijuana, and mushrooms. Damn. Displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Ooh. Diddy providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers. Mm. Christian Combs drugging and assaulting a woman. Mr. Combs, Diddy, detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with famous pastor T.D. Jakes. Uh. to do damage control. Uh. Oh, yeah, T.D. Jakes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he told Little Rod allegedly oh, that damn. he uses him to like do damage control. Damn. T.D., man. Which I, personally, I in it. my opinion, I would find that a little believable with his constant bringing up of God mm. while he's doing allegedly very demonic stuff. Mm. He also alleges in his lawsuit that Young Miami of City Girls, her cousin, essayed him. That actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Mm. essayed him Fuck. and assaulted him. That redacted rapper, the, the name is redacted on the lawsuit. Redacted rapper on the yacht was consorting with underage girls. Redacted R&B singer in Diddy's L.A. home was consorting with underage girls mm. and sex workers. So these are the serious criminal allegations that he's bringing forth in his lawsuit. Fuck, he claims dude. he witnessed the Combs family allegedly, potentially, maybe shoot someone which we will cover what? that more in part three but rodney jones alleges in his lawsuit throughout his time living with mr combs mr jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by mr combs a brief nigga just touching his ass like oh my gosh what the fuck man if list of allegations further include now again these are allegations diddy would shower and walk around naked while forcing rodney jones to work in the bathroom which is already odd rodney said that he told the chief of staff christina Corum, who is now being compared to glenn that he was very uncomfortable but she just downplayed it all as friendly horse playing that's it's not friendly bro this nigga's dick is out and he's walking around naked i don't want this this is not friendly. See now, if that shit happened to you, you would be like, you would be cool with this, right? Because you think this is friendly, right? That's what that's what that's what you that's what you're telling me, right? All right, how about we switch we switch spots? You you go ahead and do that then. You go you go ahead and go in there while this nigga meet out. He just fucking just walking around, flapping his shit around and shit, touching my ass. You would like that, huh? The fuck? It's just Diddy's way of showing he likes you. What's horse play? Like, you know, boys will be boys. Ain't horse no playing, boys like, be boys fighting. nothing. Wow. I mean, I wouldn't even give that excuse if I had a son who's seven, let alone a middle-aged man. What the hell? Ronnie said his idol in life has always been Stevie J, the musical artist. Oh, which, by the way, again, shit. these are allegations brought forth by his lawsuit that is publicly available online. Mm. I don't know these people. Which Diddy then allegedly shows him a clip of Stevie J having intimate relations with a man mm. without a condom. Oh, wow. There are screenshots included in oh. the lawsuit. Okay. Of the video? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Look, it's in the lawsuit. Rodney says Diddy was trying to use this as a way to get him to do what he wanted to do, which was sexual activities oh, with other shit. men. According to him, Diddy said, this is normal practice in the industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. Well, I don't he give states a that fuck. Diddy I don't give a shit. You talking about Stevie J? I don't give a fuck. Promised him to win a Grammy for producer of the year if he engaged in gay intimate relations. Another allegation is mm. that during Thanksgiving 2022, young Miami of City Girls, her cousin was present at Diddy's gathering. And he alleges while he was using the restroom, her cousin just burst in through the room to the bathroom and starts groping him. He believes Diddy sent her to do this. She begins performing oral on him where huh? he alleges he pushes her off and exits the bathroom, but she's not done. He goes out to the main area where everybody else is. There's staff, there's Diddy, there's allegedly young Miami there. And she just starts undressing, attempting to straddle him in front of everybody. He states once again, he pushed her off. He further alleges that he was forced to solicit sex workers and perform sex acts to pleasure Diddy. It's unclear if it's the same setup of a freak off but it sounds kind of like it Ugh. he once states that he woke up dizzy and confused he was naked looked around and he was in bed with two sex workers and mr combs it's unclear what happened that night Bro. Rodney jones alleges that once diddy allegedly threatened cannibalism on him question mark the lawsuit reads mr combs would switch up his approach he would go from promising mr jones the world to threatening mr jones with physical harm mr combs threatened to eat mr jones face and informed Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his own mother, Janice Combs, if he must in order to get what he wants, so he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. The lawsuit states Fuck. that at parties, Justin, 
the eldest biological son that mm -hmm. he has with Misa Hilton. And Sean would Damn. have minors under the age of 16 present. Damn. He alleges Diddy would force them to all drink the Delian tequila, which he believed to be laced with ecstasy. Oh, my The presence gosh. of underage women allegedly made him very uncomfortable. Oh, so, my So he goodness. has all the recordings. Yes. I don't know if all of these instances were recorded. However, I will say... Believe all victims, but in the court of law, there are some cases that are inevitably going to be stronger because there's a lot of evidence that comes with it. Mm -hmm. His lawsuit has lots of pictures. So I am oh, I'm leaning towards the belief that he does have a lot of footage. Uh. Mm. And I'm leaning towards the belief that he is working with the feds. Uh. Now, some people actually speculate that Cassie's lawsuit was not the one that kickstarted the Fed investigation. It was his. That maybe he had started working with the feds, filed his own lawsuit, and the feds publicly started getting involved. Bro, this nigga was going through it. I'm so sorry, dude. God dang. Like, you would think, bro, you would think, like, I, I don't, bro, what the fuck? When was his lawsuit? Nigga come to, bro, he, he came to do an album, and he's getting groped, his asshole touched. Women just straddling him. He's just watching niggas with underage girls waking up naked next to Diddy. Like, did, did my goodness. And then he going to tell me, oh, it's fine. Stevie J's doing it. A few months after Cassie's, he brings up more of like the Rico conspiracies, mm. the racketeering, which the feds take very seriously. Whereas for Cassie's, I think it's more focused on the sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which obviously sex trafficking is more serious, but, um, you know, America. <laughs> the presence of the underage woman made Mr. Jones very uncomfortable. He attempted to leave, but Diddy went as far as stealing his car keys to prevent him from leaving. He was forced to take shots and he woke up naked with a sex worker next to him. Now, side note, he alleges that Justin Combs would partake in those freak-offs. He has also included pictures of Diddy kissing who he claims are underage women at his party. I say alleged. The picture is there, but it's mm -hmm. unclear if they're underage. Oh, my goodness. The lawsuit continues. It is no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated for female. The fact that this nigga is, like, taking pictures of this shit is fucking crazy. Like, this nigga is doing so much illegal shit but you want this nigga to take pictures like i i did like what the fuck is emails and other bottles designated for his staff his artists and himself this fact was detailed by former artists and bodyguards of mr combs mr combs would even have sets of moe champagne bottles for his artists and not his the set for women. Oh. he also alleges that diddy's chief of staff instructed employees to lace liquor bottles with ecstasy and other illicit drugs and all the staff would have to walk around with pink cocaine which is a mixture of ecstasy <gasps> and cocaine in their pockets because diddy would freak out if he didn't have pink cocaine within arm's reach at all times that's what he alleges. He also likens the chief of staff, Christina, as Ghislaine Maxwell in his lawsuit. He claims Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak off parties and his house parties. Due to his treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and untouchable. Mm. Like I said in the lawsuit, there were those photos of Stevie J. But do that with what you will. I don't know. It, mm. it, it's very unclear what he's doing in the screenshots. He's shirtless. I don't... It's unclear if you can even say definitively if it's him, but but that would be a crazy accusation to make if you didn't believe that to be 100% true. Like, Ugh. speaking from Rodney Jones's fact. Because even including that, he must believe it's 100% true or it is true. Mm -hmm. Because think about the repercussions. Rodney Jones also alleges that Mr. Jones was forced to watch as Mr. Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. He also shared that he was the one responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with oh, rapper what the Shine. Oh the my one with gosh. Mr. Combs has made it clear that his head of security had the power to make people and problems disappear. disappear. Uh. Lil Rod would say about Diddy. He's a monster. He will do whatever is necessary to get exactly what he wants. He doesn't take no for an answer. And on top of that, these guys are trying to steal my publishing. I can't go for that. So I'm fighting back. He's a fighter, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put in this fight. I got to do it for my... Wait, question. Quick question. This is just a quick question. I hope... I know damn well this not because you ain't get your publishing. 
You, I hope you're doing this for the right cause, bro. I, I hope you're not doing this just because the nigga ain't giving you your publishing. Like, that will actually piss me off. Like, that was the, the thing that put the battery in your back. The pup. Myself, my rights, and most importantly, my kids. Here I am standing up for justice for what I believe is right for my life and I'm being punished for that. I've had many nights and weeks and months of self-exit thoughts. Mm. It's the music that has kept me living all my life. He said he's paranoid about what could possibly happen to him. He's hired security to protect him. He said during a recent performance, my anxiety was out through the roof. I saw different guys backstage I didn't know and I got scared. I wondered where the security was. It made me very uncomfortable. It's not a good feeling wondering if someone is there to attack me. Mm-hmm. If all alleged in the lawsuit is true, it is clear that anyone who crosses Diddy should be very scared. November Shit. 15th, 2018. 47-year-old Kim Porter is oh, found dead fuck. in her home. Her goddaughter found her in the bed at around 8.30 a.m. She assumed she was sleeping in that morning, but then checked again at around 11, three hours later, oh and she gosh. hadn't moved. She freaked out, called 911. Authorities rushed to the scene. Yo. They see Kim laying motionless in bed. Next to Kim's bed on her nightstand, bottles of water, sports drinks, Pedialyte, as well oh, as what appeared no. to be a bowl of tomato soup. She was declared dead 11.40 a.m. Fuck. The call came in as a report that someone was in cardiac arrest. Kim had apparently not been feeling well for the past few days. Honestly, weeks. It said that she had pneumonia or symptoms of a flu. She didn't know at the time. Uh -huh. She was just not feeling well. She tried to get it treated with saline, vitamins. She went to bed early the night before she was found. Alarmingly, she told someone that she had a mild streak of blood in her phlegm when coughing. Oh my but it gosh. does not appear that it came back. She was on antibiotics, IV fluids, and then unfortunately she passed away. Peace, Diddy bro. says the day Kim passed, he, quote, jumped into mommy mode. I sent people in every direction to try and make sure the kids would not hear about it on social media or the news. I had to get the girls from the school. I had to find Quincy, who was on set in Atlanta, Christian, who was on a plane. I had to get his phone disconnected so he couldn't read it on the air. There was screaming and crying when I heard the news, of course, but I had to ask myself, what would Kim do? I was scared. I mean, I was crying out to God and to her. And immediately, almost immediately, Kim's voice kicked in and I could hear her saying, make sure you take care of my baby. He would later say that day, that day turned my world upside down. Three days before she passed, she wasn't feeling well. She had the flu and she sent the kids over to my house so they wouldn't get sick. And one night I was checking on her and she was like, Puffy, take care of my babies. She actually said that to me before she died. He held a memorial at his home where Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, French Montana and other high profile celebrities were in attendance. He says this about his relationship with Kim Porter. Whenever I was around her, I felt like God had his hand in it. I always felt like God had sent her. Nobody could love me the way she loved me, especially as, you know, as crazy as I acted. I mean, she loved me through some real shit. He would later state in a public statement about her, God broke the mold when he made Kim. There was truly no other woman like her. God sent her to teach me something. Which, side note, is already what kind did, of an odd statement that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. No woman exists to teach a man something, but <laughs> I digress. He continues, <laughs> there's levels and dimensions to love, and especially love between a man and a woman. There's this place that almost goes beyond friendship. It's like where two people actually feel like a level of responsibility to love this person forever and total trust. And I was like, man, you had it. I'm not saying I would do anything differently, God willing. Um, I just wish I had more time, you know. I look at my life as I got a second chance. I'm on my second mountain. At her funeral, he would say, some people in your life, it's going to be irreplaceable. Kim, we're going to miss you so much, but I'm not going to miss you too much because I'm not going to let your voice inside me stop talking. I know you like to talk to me a lot once you get on those rants. And I just want you to know that I'm going to be listening. What is Kim's official cause of death? Her cause of death is considered natural. Yeah, huh? we'll get to it. Huh? So he does all these tributes to Kim, and this is going to be um, kind of strange when you listen to the next part of natural? this series because what? he does a lot of tributes to a lot of people who pass, which I guess is normal if you're an artist, but still.
He would even dedicate a track named after her on his new album that was released in 2023, The Love Album, where he says this, it's like I'm going through a midlife crisis, being a single father raising three teenage girls, but it's love and nothing else. I truly feel like this is God's way of making me into the best human I can become, and it's life-changing. I don't know what it is, but the way that this man is spamming God in his quotes is kind of making me uneasy, because just like, just all the things that he's being alleged, it's like, yo... Uh, Bro. <laughs> I always said that I couldn't make a hit record unless my heart is broken. It's just like a vulnerable state that you're in. When I lost Kim, it broke my heart forever. A close friend of his said about Diddy's tribute to Kim. After Kim, he was trying to find purpose and nothing feeds his soul like music. He also says about therapy, therapy probably likely really saved my brain because when you have a genius brain, <laughs> it's also a Are you afraid brain. of clowns? Of course, there are questions of how someone just passes away like that, seemingly out of nowhere. She was healthy, suddenly caught pneumonia, which if you have pre-existing conditions, if you are of older age, if you have low immunity, if you have other health complications, uh -huh. pneumonia could be fatal. Right. But it's not considered this deadly thing. Yeah. So it's just not as many people pass away from pneumonia is like it's treatable, right? Yes, is the netizen sentiment. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying nobody has fatal yeah. or life altering consequences from right. pneumonia, but it's just not typically known to be this very terrifying fatal condition. Question. So like I've never had pneumonia. Some some of my family members have. If anybody out there has had pneumonia, can you please, like, help me out? Because, like, she said she wasn't feeling good for, what, three days? And then she just dies? And it's ruled pneumonia. So, are we, like, forgetting that Diddy gets medical records? Like, did he get her medical records or anything to just say what happened? Because, you know, like, they might cover the shit up because it's not hard to cover up a, a death cause but like am i trip like is that possible that someone can die from pneumonia three to four days later like within the same week like how strong is it like i don't what the hell it was later determined that kim porter had died from low bar pneumonia oh. the manner of death listed on her autopsy is natural Detectives told the media that police do not suspect foul play. In addition, Diddy mm. has been extremely cooperative. Mm -hmm. Some netizens were agreeing with this sentiment, pointing out how prior to her death, she seemed like she was in a good place with Diddy. In honor of his 49th birthday, which was a week before her death, she posted on Instagram, Happy birthday, Diddy. On this day, a genius was born. May you continue to be the driving force of energy that God created you to Bro, the first comment says Diddy should be born. Oh my gosh. Be. Thank you for giving me the best gifts of life, mm. our children. But a lot of others don't think that she died of a natural death. But who are we? We're just people on the internet. I mean, Some yeah, have stated, but... you know what else gives you pneumonia? This is a recent conspiracy lately. Accidentally inhaling baby oil. There are lots of conspiracies that there is no way that Kim died of pneumonia. Gene Deal, the former bodyguard, said, that case needs to be reopened, man. That case really needs to be reopened. He alleges that Kim was found dead with bruises throughout her body. And interestingly, he claims nobody knows to this day where Kim Porter's phone is, oh. which is odd. He also alleges that it's strange. This was in 2018. So they have the cloud. They have all these things. Why didn't anyone go in and try to investigate her last text or where her phone location is? Why can't they find my iPhone? He also states that her tablet and computer have gone missing since they found her dead, which I'm not privy to any specific information like this. I'm just giving you his allegations. Huh? He says, find my phone. Nobody tried to find her phone. He's asked, you personally, what do you think happened to Kim Porter? Gene Deal responds, I'm not a medical professional, nor was I an investigator on that case, but I don't believe that an individual with her... I'm not even going to hold you, bro. Like, I'm not the type of person to just, like, think of a conclusion and jump into conclusions like that. But somebody's phone is, like, their lifeline. And if their fucking phone is missing, something is going on. Their phone is missing. Nobody has their phone missing like that. It's probably in the house charging somewhere or like uh like if if she left the phone somewhere, this shit's probably on because if you leave your phone, more than likely the phone is still going to be on and be traceable. No, I'm not no, I'm not I'm not going with that. I'm not going with that.
something has to have gone on, bro. Where the fuck is the phone at? Y'all don't understand. Well, y'all probably do understand. Someone stealing somebody's phone is like, isn't that like grand theft or something? Like, it's literally, it's literally illegal to go through your partner's phone. Like, the phone is missing. It's what, it's what, 2018? Them phone, these phones have been so, so pivotal in people's lives since like what, 2015, 2014? Where the, like, no, bro, I'm not, I'm not going, what? I want to say financial status would lay up in that house and die of pneumonia without a doctor or some kind of medical person responsible. Someone with enough money that they could get half the hospital to come to the house. I think there may have been some. I guess foul play. Because if you knew what I knew, he put Kim in a gold casket. Then he has security, 24-hour security at the funeral home so nobody would go in there and take Kim out of there. What? I think they should reopen her case and have an independent pathologist look at everything about her so she can rest in peace. He also brings up how many sources state that she received a massage because she wasn't feeling well the night before her passing. He points out... That's so weird. Who gets a massage when they have pneumonia? You don't want people touching you. If you have the flu, you're like, don't touch me. I want to lay here. Yeah. Is there bruises? Nobody move my body. There's bruises. He also brings up, again, these are his viewpoints, but someone needs to look into if they used baby oil during the massage is what he states because mm. there are now allegations circulating that the baby oil was laced with something. Mm. So you feel like she was murdered? I feel like there was a lot of foul play in her death. A lot of foul play. He's asked, but why would someone want Kim Porter dead? He responds very ominously. There's a couple of women in this industry, and for their sake, I will not mention their names. Listen to me. There are a couple of women, probably more than a handful or two, but I know about four of them that knows everybody's dirty secrets. And if those secrets get exposed and tell what some of those guys and some of these people were really doing behind mm -hmm. closed doors in those boardrooms, in and out of the closet, their life would be in danger because men wasn't men and women were acting like men. And that's all I'm going to say. Mm. I got a couple names, too, that I'm thinking. After seeing that fucking list, I got a couple names that I'm thinking, bro. I don't want to say nothing. and I'm not going to say nothing right now. Until she talks about this fucking list, bro. I'm, yo, the, the amount of shit that I've heard is insane, bro. And I'm not going to lie. One of the names that I'm thinking is probably someone that you might think. Yo, <laughs> hey, cuz. I'm, mm. But he does not believe the Amazon book is Kim's diary entries or in any way related to Kim. He says, if you've seen the excerpts from that book, then you know Kim didn't write this book. If you know Kim and you've been around Kim. Wait, so this guy, Jean, Jean, what's his name? Jean, Jean Deal. Jean Deal was a bodyguard during the time of uh, Kim Porter. Yes. So he was actually a bodyguard for a lot of famous musicians and executives. He was well known in the industry. He doubled as a cop. Ooh. He worked oh, as a child I abuse see. investigator as well as a probation officer for most of his life. Mm. So people really liked him because he he's very clean cut is the vibe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he gets hired by Diddy when Diddy is dating Kim Porter. And he says that Diddy never really ever hit Kim Porter in front of him but he would hear from the other bodyguards. So for him, his perception, his allegation is that Diddy only does things with people he thinks he can get away with. Mm -hmm. And for him, because he has a job as a cop, he's saying, if I see Diddy hit anyone, I'm arresting Diddy because I'm not trying to lose my pension. Right. I'm not trying to lose my job as a cop. Right. So he knows that I'm not going to put up with it. He said that Diddy once cussed out his mom in the car. Mm -hmm. And he went off on Diddy and was like, you don't talk to your mother like yeah, that. Yeah, like, what the wow. fuck, bro? But then he later heard, allegedly from other bodyguards, that Diddy was, like, slapping his mom in the face. But it never happened when he was there. Oh, well, he knows wow. not who not to He's fuck with. He's been pretty with. vocal, and his story has never really changed, it appears. So a lot of netizens find him credible. Mm -hmm. But again, that's an opinion. These are allegations. He says, and if you've been around Kim, if she was going to do a book, she wouldn't have included all those things, talking sexually like that. She's got two boys, two girls, and she was a mother first. Right. She wasn't going to say the stuff that she was saying and about Puff in a manner that was written in that book. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Thinking about, like, just, 
I don't know if this book is true or not, but what I'm saying is like she to me from what I'm hearing now, she seems like a very very like noble woman and even with whatever happens, she'll keep it close to the chest. And I'm I'm just like thinking like the way like the way Diddy was dogging her out from what it seems, she kept it close to the chest. So I don't really I don't I don't know. I I don't really would think, but then again, I don't put anything past anybody, but I don't know, man. I don't really think that the mother of his children, knowing the climate of how black folks are, especially in hip in hip hop, would would like talk about stuff like this. You know? I don't think so. But then again, Diddy did dog her out, so it's like you know what they say. Nothing's more dangerous than a scorned woman. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, I don't know, bro. Ugh. It seems to me that whoever wrote the book was really out to get Diddy and did it in whatever means possible. But disrespecting Kim and who she was as a mother, I don't think that's right. I think she deserves better. Hmm. Side note, it does not appear that Diddy has filed a lawsuit against Gene Deal, which a lot of people think add to his credibility, which is, again, just an opinion. He's probably One afraid of this comment nigga. reads, the fact that Diddy hasn't yet filed a lawsuit against Gene Deal with all the things he said about Diddy is the most telling realization of all. He probably... Some people now believe that Kim Porter's death needs to be reinvestigated, but they also believe that she's the one that wrote that memoir on Amazon. Again, I can't dictate what others believe. I'm just telling you what's out there. Some believe that that memoir is real. They point to an interview that was done in 2012, so six years before her death, where in the interview, Kim talks about wanting to write a book. I will say it doesn't appear that she's referencing a memoir or any sort of tell-all book at all. She mm -hmm. says, But I've been in the business and been around the business. It's become a phenomenon. It's a culture. It's a, you know, it's just for me, I wanted to present something beautiful and package it mm -hmm. and almost like an ode to them to what they've done. Right. Some netizens okay. think that she's just using that as a cover to write a memoir. Some netizen comments read, if this book is false, how come the author hasn't been sued? I mean, I really hope it's fake, though, because there's a lot of crazy shit in there. Another comment reads, the more that I listen to folk coming up against the book, the more I believe in its authenticity. Others referenced Chris Todd's interviews and they say, this man got too much confidence not to have proof that Kim wrote this book. He you got some type that. of proof somewhere because he just has too much confidence. Another says, what if a close friend of Kim's had the actual book and flash drives, but is just too scared to come out because they're too interconnected and is using this man as a front? Guys, think about it. Another comment reads, this is a lot of shit to make up. I can see some things being true, but who knows? Then there's another group of... And also, it's like, if you want... Like, people who... Thinking about it in a way of how people will try to, like, expose somebody for shit, I don't think people would go through a book. Like, in this, in, in this, in this time period, say, like... Okay, so say, like, um, Lipstick Alley... Or, like, those blind item sites and stuff like that. Back in, like, what, 03 to 2010 or, like, in that in the time during the blog era, like, that would be the time to expose people because that's what, what people were looking at. Nowadays, people expose people on Twitter, on uh, TikTok, or on Instagram. People don't go through books. You know what I'm saying? And I believe back in that time, from from what I remember of when it was done, they don't go through books. They go through other mediums where it can get people, like, get people like, uh, 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 uh. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Or maybe this shit is all planned. But I wouldn't say, I don't know anybody who would put a tell-all and it would be false. But... I don't know, dude. But people that, yes, they want her death to be investigated, but they don't believe that she wrote that book on Amazon. They comment, that book at first glance, this reeks of a shamelessly fabricated cash grab attempt. I don't know. It just seems a little too convenient. And the stories that I've seen excerpts of appear to be someone just wildly producing sensationalized garbage and toxic gossipy bullshit. I hope for the sake of any potential victims that these things did not occur. Another one comments, this book seems like it was written by ChatGPT or something. 
Others have been very happy that it's been since pulled from Amazon, stating, I'm glad they took it off Amazon. The nerve of that fraud. Mm. RIP Kim. But fueling conspiracies around Kim's death, I'll be sure Kim's previous partner, the father of her first child, has made a statement. In it, he basically insinuates two things. One, that Diddy might have something to do with Kim's death. And two, that Diddy might have put him in a coma. Yeah, I was about to say. Okay. Wait. Who? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a yes. Lot yes. On. Yes, bro. Yes. He is Quincy's dad, artist. He's a well known artist back in the day, okay. I'll be sure. Yeah, there's a lot going on. But in an Instagram post, he states in 2024, Kim and I talked right up to a few days prior to her demise. She was in good health and we were in such a great friend space, reminiscing about old times and celebrating the news of our son's accomplishments. In a nutshell, Kimberly was allegedly taken from us because she was set on a course to accomplish what Miss Cassie Ventura did by igniting the bonfire, which brings us here today hmm. with the avalanche that has brought Satan to their chambers. And you know what else is interesting? I did get word that I'll be sure is trying to like connect with Quincy. Like he's making like he's making like I guess Instagram posts or like ways to try to get to him to get his son back. I don't know what that means, but like what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like what the what the actual fuck? He also hashtags FBI, DOJ, Department of Justice, as well as the CIA, DEA, NYPD, LAPD. Oh, he's he has called people. for a, quote, investigation into an entire group of individuals who worked at or around the residence of Miss Kimberly Porter. Because, quote, the individuals involved in this matter may also be connected to also concealing the alleged murders of several prominent artists. He's alluding to Tupac and Biggie. Mm hmm. Which we will talk about in the next one. Yeah. Side note, I'll be sure. In Bro, this next one's about to be nuts. Cause, uh, nigga, oh my gosh. Interestingly enough, believes that Kim was working on a book to expose Diddy. That's why she was allegedly taken too soon. Before she could expose him in a book, and then later someone stole her computer, is what he alleges. But he doesn't think that that Amazon book is the book. Because everyone's saying the way that the book is written is just not the way that Kim Porter speaks. Hmm. Yeah, and then like things, there's like factual inaccuracies. Even the bodyguard doesn't think it's the book. There's just so many people that have come out against the book that are against Diddy. Mm. And Al Bishir goes on to allege that he had a health scare in 2022. This is actually true. He did fall into a coma and the vice president, Kamala Harris, even wrote him a letter. Yeah. Quick, quick, t t quick side note. Did y'all hear the thing about Jamie Foxx? Remember when Jamie Foxx was going through them, them health things? Some people are saying like he was a part of those freak offs and was on those tapes and something happened and he was it's hearsay, but dog, like this is we this is scary, bro. This is very scary. Uh, they're all very what? well connected. Yeah, he's a very prominent artist and I believe he does mm. activist he's an activist. I'll be sure. As well. Wow. Yeah, so he's been invited to a lot of state dinners, and so is his son, Quincy. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, he collapsed in July of 2022, fell into a coma, wakes up, it's October 2022. He was in a coma for around three months. To this day, it seems unclear what exactly caused the coma, but he kind of implies that perhaps Diddy was involved. He announced his documentary and states, you will really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. Later, he's asked to clarify that ominous statement, and he just, I mean, someone asked straight up, did Diddy try to kill you? He just responds, please understand very carefully. Me talking about situations for more than a decade and a half, and then all of a sudden, everybody woke up like, whoa, yo, we thought you were crazy, but what I'm not is a liar. That I am not. All I did was give the science, and I was ignored, laughed at, ridiculed, but whatever, that's okay. My God is so much bigger. My God got me. I love that. Why, why, why do people talk so cryptically? Shit. So he's saying that he's been talking about Diddy for like a decade? Yes, but I don't think so publicly. Mm -hmm. Because he's actually seemingly a very non-controversial person. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be he sure. also has had lingering health problems for a while. He did have bariatric surgery. He suffered oh, from renal failure, amongst other things. So it's very unclear what caused the coma. But a lot of people, a lot of people believe him because he just seems to be very credible. He hasn't been this controversial figure for most of his life. Hmm.
But others point out, Albi Sher had a child with Kim Porter and formally dated her. He did not take an active role in his son's life, and Puffy ended up unofficially adopting and raising oh, that child. Shit. So they're saying, because you're not a good dad, you don't deserve to have an opinion here. Oh. Another netizen comments, what does that have to do with Puffy and what he might have done to Kim? Some question that perhaps Al Sorry. wasn't in his son's life because Diddy wouldn't let him be. But that's just another pure speculation. Gene Deal, Diddy's former bodyguard, states, Al's a real good dude. Do you know what I mean? So if Al is saying something that's happened to him and Puff has something to do with it, trust and believe he's going to have some evidence to substantiate that. I that trust Puff has something nigga. to do I'm, with it. Either he gave him something or sent something his way. I, I really trust his fucking bodyguard. Like Gene Deal. Like I don't just the way he talks is like he's like, yeah, this happened. Da 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 da. This happened. Da blah 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 blah. Like it didn't really seem like he is like embellishing stories he could be but like the way he talks he talks like an old head that just like seen some shit like i don't know like i don't know if y'all like y'all know it, it don't really matter the race but for me i grew up around um like my dad used to take me to like stuff where old heads would just be talking and he'd be like huh like he talks as if it happens you, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know if, like, there's, like, some OGs in y'all lives or y'all, y'all, um, y'all dads or granddads or uncles be giving y'all lore and it sounds real, real as fuck. It, like, it doesn't sound like they're, like, embellishing anything. And it's like, whoa. Why do I believe you? You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm. it, I mean, uh, at least so far, it seems like everyone around them are very vocal about how shady yeah. Diddy is. I haven't really heard anybody who's backing Diddy's story. Have you seen many reports? Um, no, but that has been a question of why aren't people backing Diddy? Because they're fucking scared. This nigga, dog, this list is insane. This list is fucking crazy. <laughs> like. <sighs> and so yeah. the the biggest thing is all of his friends have gone quiet. Yeah. Some people think it's because... Right, the, all the conspiracies. Yes, of. because um, people are saying if you're not in some sort of tape, if you're if Diddy has nothing on you, why would you not come out and condemn his actions for the hotel footage that has been proven that that is him beating Cassie? Yeah. Because you might not have known that as a friend. And to come out and say, I don't condone this, I don't endorse this, this is not the type of friend that I would ever keep in my quarters... I'm sorry, I yeah. didn't know. I mean, that's one, but also even like the people around in their yeah. families and people who work with him, like just just people in general. Like everybody's quiet. Right? Like, yeah. In regards to Albi Shore hiring security, which he has hired security, Gene says, I don't think nobody would be paying for security unless they thought their life was in danger. Same thing with Rodney Jones. Mm. While many agree with Albi Shore, some have comments. I guess this is his chance to get back in the news. What? Who? Yeah. One party that is clearly not on the same page as Albie Shore about Kim Porter's death are Kim's children. They have released a joint statement, mainly in regards to the book that has been circulating. They took to Instagram to state, We have seen so many hurtful and false rumors circulating about our parents, Kim Porter and Sean Combs' relationship, as well as our mom's tragic passing, that we feel the need to speak out. Claims that our mom wrote a book are simply untrue. She did not. And anyone claiming to have a manuscript is misrepresenting themselves. Additionally, please understand that any so-called friend speaking on behalf of our mom or her family is not a friend, nor do they have her best interests at heart. The cause of her death has long been established. There was no foul play. Grief is a lifelong process, and we ask that everyone respect our request for peace as we continue to cope with her loss every day. We are deeply saddened that the world has made a spectacle of what has been the most tragic event of our lives. Our mother should be remembered for the beautiful, strong, kind, and loving woman that she was. Her memory should not be tainted by horrific conspiracy theories. Another one of Kim's longtime friends. I'm not going to hold you, though. Like, one thing that I kind of am, like, kind of, like, feeling weird about is, like, forcing this thing for Miss Porter you know what I'm saying? Like, they say respect their wishes for privacy, then we should do that. We should, in all honesty, if that's a closed case, we should focus more on the common denominator for all this stuff. And we know who the common denominator is. 
like hey, like Cat Williams said, the truth is gonna these big dick deviants are going to be exposed. It is two months left in 2024. There's going to be a lot happening in 2025, and it's going to be insane. This nigga Diddy is about to go to trial. Like for all of this stuff. The feds, the fucking homeland security, like dog. Shit like this does not happen like this. This is crazy. This is this is insane. And it's not it's the tip of the iceberg still. This there's so much going on. Like it's like mm, they call Hollywood Holly Weird for a reason. The dude is like he's he's tied with so many people. You don't get that wealthy and you not rubbing shoulders with certain types of people, bro. Like they said there was like princes at these parties, people that you wouldn't even expect at these parties, politicians at these parties. Like dog. I don't know if you guys are ready or not. But it's finna get nuts. No pun intended. Friends took to Instagram to write. I'm gonna say this as loud as I can. Kim Porter never drafted nor wrote a book, memoir, or a manuscript. Kim would never do such a thing, and that's the honest to God truth. Another states, Kim Porter never authored a manuscript, and any claims suggesting otherwise are entirely false and fabricated. The baseless pages in the book not only misrepresent Miss Porter's lived experience and legacy, but also continue to cause unnecessary distress to her loved ones. Kim's former attorney has also spoken out saying she would be turning over in her grave right now. Kim never even gave an interview about her private life. She would never do that to her children. She had plenty to say, but she would never do so publicly. Mm. There would be no amount of money that could make her write a memoir. She would never do anything to hurt Puffy's reputation because she has children with him. Mm. It is impossible that that is her journal. It's She's comical. Real. She never even spoke that way. She never wrote that way. She was articulate. She was classy. She would never write something like that. She is there would solid, be no bro. need for her to do that she also states i guarantee she was not part of those freak offs i think she would have cut off his penis if he ever proposed that to her which kind of goes against what others have stated but it's up for you to decide what you believe right mm. one netizen comments read two things can be true at the same time there can be legitimate questions about kim's death and also her children can be upset about the tabloid media and weirdos on the internet making a spectacle about those legitimate questions. Yeah. It's a terrible situation. They have my sympathies. So I, as I was researching, there's a lot of AI generated videos that have been going around about this case. Oh, it's shit. not even just people asking for an investigation into her death and talking about the allegations that have been brought forth about Diddy's alleged behavior towards Kim Porter and how that could have contributed to her passing in 2018. But just like straight crazy rumors like mm -hmm. she was i can't even repeat them they're just so so I bad see, i see yeah okay mm. another reads i feel for the kids but kim's death should absolutely be looked at differently in hindsight diddy is a long-standing hollywood conspiracy that has pieces falling into place left and right there's going to be an intense amount of speculation because to be honest there has always been we just have some proof lining up now but another commentator writes, leave this alone, leave the kids alone, make him be resting in peace. Another reads, these poor kids are losing everything. Let them grieve their mother in peace while the rest of the world is watching their father's downfall. Even if two of these kids aren't underage, they still deserve some privacy and respect. Another reads, God damn, I'm so tired of the conspiracy addicted dipshits who think they are the world's greatest detectives. Half the people in this thread need to get off the fucking phone, man. Now, I will say that um, a lot of these comments, people are defending the kids and i think a lot of the times everyone is mainly defending the girls the mm -hmm. twins yeah. and when they are defending christian a lot of them don't know that he has a lawsuit against him so there there's more discourse mm. once you read more replies of them ah. like oh I, I didn't even know that he was part of it because uh, they were writing about him in a way that he is purely innocent mm. and he is innocent until proven guilty but just letting you know, there is a lawsuit against him. But others are angry, commenting, we are talking about a man who is accused of multiple murders, rapes, and domestic violence, and other atrocities, but speculating about the suspicious death of the mother of his children is where we cross the line. Kim Porter's father has made an interesting statement oh, to Daily shit. Mail. He says, when I saw the video of what he did to Cassie, I was disgusted. I don't really have much to say beyond that. Everyone's innocent until Aww. proven guilty, I guess, but the truth will come out.
It's going to come he out. never states that he wants another look into the death of his daughter, but he does state that the previous investigation was, quote, a load of crap. Another family member of Kim states, I remember Kim as a little girl. She was just the sweetest little girl. And I remember how she grew up to be so beautiful and talented. But I saw the change in her when we visited her out in California when she was with him. Mm. She changed. Mm. Something wasn't right. Now, I feel in my spirit that he's guilty, but justice will have to take its course. If she was my daughter, I would be demanding that the investigation be reopened. So with that, Christian Combs has been in the news again because just two days after his dad's recent court hearing, the one where they set his trial date to May of 2025, two days after that, he was spotted partying with his girlfriend, pouring shots into her mouth. Which is just not a good look because... Like at a nightclub? Yeah, but again, not a good look. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, it's a little odd. Some people are defending Christian Combs, I mean, saying, y'all need to stop it with judging this family for real. Y'all have convicted the whole family over here, say. And once again, when you read more replies, you'll notice that people are reminding <sighs> everyone Christian Combs has also been named in a civil lawsuit. Yeah. Other comments read, let him live as he's already lost his mother. I did the same thing at that age. Everybody deals with family crisis differently. I mean, pouring alcohol in your girlfriend's mouth is also something that's like that they do if it's consensual, you know, it's like a thing. If it's consensual, it looks crazy from who's doing it, but shit. Others comment, what do you expect from him to do? Cry in his room? Others have pointed out that his girlfriend's nails are painted white. Uh and some just think it's just not very tasteful or smart for him to be partying. And this is part two. Part three will be about the 13 people who have mysteriously died around Diddy. Mm. There's also a very, very alarming pattern, like I said, of just the strange ways he responds to death. Mm -hmm. And finally, part four will be the so-called Diddy's list and all the Internet allegations, as well as there have been some new lawsuits that have been filed against him, including um, Diddy being listed in a lawsuit filed against Kanye West. Yep. Yep. So yep, 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 yep. OK. All right. Mm hmm. Let's do it. Uh is a lot going on Ooh, right now a lot shit. of new developments and discourse every day stay tuned and be safe and i will see you in the next one hey bro i'm gonna be honest this whole thing is a big ass onion that's about to go through different layers at the end of the day i for me i think something happened with miss porter but i'm not about to just be that type of guy to be like hey we need to do this and just force it like let her rest in peace. And, like, that's just my opinion. And you can have your opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. But, like, bro, I feel like once we get to, like, part three and four, it's 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 about to get crazy. It's about to get insane. Like, I feel like first these two, the casting one was insane, but it's, like, the tip of the iceberg. We're about to look at, like, the people who died around him. And then the list, I'm just preparing myself. I hope you guys are preparing yourself and taking care of yourself. But the whole the whole time, this dude is insane. This whole thing is insane. Like, once again, I'm still heartbroken that someone that I used to look up to, someone that, like, all we used to look up to because he, found, like, cause he made it. We thought he made it. And to find out all these things... It's just coming back. It's just like opening up. It's sad to see. And my heart goes out to the victims. First and foremost. Like dog. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine at all. Rest in peace to Kim Border. For real. May your soul rest in peace man. Hope you guys take care of yourself. And I'll see you all in the next video.